the Houston Arrows reflect on a season that could have been. Returning veterans, young stars, and solid goaltending. A season that looked so bright turned into a season to forget. Terry Ruskowski started the season, but the team didn't respond. Dave Tippett took over, but the league's talent and time finally won out. The Arrows fought hard and battled, but their playoff hopes have crashed and burned. The UPN finale is next. from Wing Stadium in Kalamazoo, Michigan. It's Saturday night on ice. Tonight, the Houston Arrows take on the Michigan K-Wings in live International Hockey League action. A very pleasant good evening, everybody. Welcome to Wing Stadium, and I'm Adam Gordon alongside Mike Greenlee, the Arrows and the Michigan K-Wings. The Arrows, some bad news last night. They lost in a shootout 3-2 to the Indianapolis Ice, and the Atlanta Knights won 7-4 last night. So the Arrows mathematically eliminated from playoff action, and even so, the Arrows still playing some good hockey. It's just too little, too late. Oh, well, yeah, they've showed a lot of heart and desire uh, the last few games, and you're right, it's it's too bad because they are playing with a lot of character right now, and I'm still, I think Dave Tippett's still glad to see that, though. And one thing that Dave Tippett is very glad to see has been the play of Graham Townsend as of late. Graham Townsend scored both arrow tallies last night, goals number 20 and 21 on the year. They were both power play goals. He now leads the team with 10 power play goals this season. Another guy, Mike Greenlay, that has been playing some terrific hockey has been the Arrows netminder, Troy Gamble. In fact, he's playing so well, he's going to get another start tonight. Yeah, it'll be his 10th that he'll be celebrating tonight. Tomorrow he celebrates his 29th birthday, but I tell you what, he has played phenomenal as of late. He's made some unbelievable saves, and I tell you what, he's really held the arrows in some tight games and given them a great opportunity to win. And that takes us to our Oshman's game plan brought to you by Oshman Super Sports USA and although the arrows not playing for playoffs, playing for pride. Yeah, and they have to play for that jersey tonight. They have to play for the guy sitting next to them and they have to play for the head coach who's done such a great job in Dave Tippett. Secondly, the arrows have to get back to base. This is a small rink, small neutral zone. Get it out of your zone, get it deep in there and crash the boards. And third, play the game. Just play this game, try and get a win, get out of Kalamazoo and get off this long road too. All right, we'll talk about that when we return. Mike Greenlay has Dave Tippett in the studio. This is Saturday Night on Ice. UPN 20's Saturday Night on Ice is sponsored by Southwest Airlines, by Columbia Healthcare Partners, by Chrysler Plymouth, by Dodge, by Jeep Eagle, and by Whataburger. Welcome back to Wing Stadium. Mike Greenley along with head coach Dave Tippett. And Dave, uh, the end of a quite a long road trip that's been uh, relatively successful. Uh, what, what's your outlook for tonight? Well, we, you know, it has been a long week for us. It's, uh, it's a road trip where we started in Kalamazoo and we end in Kalamazoo because it's a little bit of a different situation. But we've actually played very well on the road. Uh, you know, we, uh, we got beat in Orlando, which was a pretty good hockey game. We gave up a few girl goals early that got us behind the eight ball, but we battled back. Last night I thought we played very well and deserved a better fate than we got, but you know, it's been a pretty good road trip and we'd sure like to, to end it with a good win here tonight. Now you mentioned the loss, uh, the shootout loss last night in Indianapolis all coupled with the Atlanta Knights win. Uh, unfortunately, this uh, mathematically eliminates the arrows from any postseason play. Uh, your feelings on that? Well, it's, uh, you know, it's definitely tough to swallow. You know, we, uh, you look back at different points in the season and, uh, you know, around the 1st of March, I thought we had ourselves in pretty good position and uh, comparing the schedules of the two teams, I thought uh, we'd make a good run at it and uh, we struggled the first couple weeks of March. It really kind of put us behind the eight ball and uh, unfortunately we didn't get there, but, uh, you know, we've got to look to the future now and we're going to play these, uh, play these four games hard and, uh, and got a lot of work to do over the summer. The guys have uh, really played hard in the last little while. That's got to made you, have made you feel pretty proud. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of character in that dressing room. And, uh, you know, we've struggled at times this year. And uh, I think if anybody had the one answer, I mean, we would have corrected it. I mean, it's just been a, a number of things that have uh, just not gone gone well for the team this year. And, but the guys have hung in there. And, uh, you know, especially a road trip like this, I mean, the character comes out in guys. And we've got guys like Mark Lamb. And, Al Conroy and Troy Gamble playing very well and uh, you know it shows the character those people have. All right well thank you very much and good luck for the rest of the season. Thanks very much Green. All right that's Dave Tippett head coach of the Houston Arrows and we'll be back to the Wing Stadium right after this.
Welcome back to Wing Stadium. Adam Gordon along with Mike Greenlay as we are ready to go with the Arrows and the Michigan K-Wings. The Arrows have dropped to two in a row. They lost in a shootout last night. And, of course, they lost the other night in Orlando. Starting in goal for the Houston Arrows, it will be Troy Gamble, 15-23-5, a 3.77 goals against average, 88.6 on the save percentage. His last win was back on March 31st, a 7-4 victory against the Fort Wayne Comets. He made 32 saves in that game. He made 21 saves last night against the Indianapolis Ice. In goal for the Michigan K-Wings, Manny Fernandez. And the manual on a manual is quite simple. He's been playing some pretty good hockey, 7-7-2 seven, seven, and two with a three-point even goals against average. And Fernandez was named the goalie of the week back the first week of the season, but a three-time runner-up this season. And he is the guy that the Earls will have to try and get by tonight. Last time, they, when the Earls wanted to shoot out 2-1, they had to deal with their backup goalie. In the bench for the Arrows, Dave Tippett. 14, 15, and five, looking to go to 500 with the win tonight. We are underway from Kalamazoo, and the K-Wings have it. Turn the puck over in their own end. Lamb lost it, and it's Neil Brady down the right side for Michigan. Pass came into Lawrence with a quick shot. That went wide. Jumped on by Conroy. He'll turn in behind and flip the puck to the near side. Lamb trying to move it out of the zone. He's bumped by Smith, and here come the Arrows. It is Turgeon trying to clear it, takes a bump from Gusev. And it's Smith again with a drive and a blocker save made by Gamble. Jumped on by Lamb and he'll move it up to the near side at center. No, it was held in by Lawrence. Good play there. Arrows trying to dig it out. Loose puck fend it away and Gord Krupke will fling it along the boards and down the ice it'll go. Sergey Gusev goes back for Michigan. He'll play the puck in his own end as he will move it from right to left in this period. Brian Curran has it up now for Mike Donnelly. He'll skate out at center. Detroit, Michigan native fired the one in on Campbell, who snuck in on five hole on him. He closed the pillows with a minute gone in the first period of scoreless hockey game. Well, Troy Gamble hasn't lost in this building uh, this year as an arrow, and I think that's another reason why Dave Tippett started him. Of course, the, the easiest reason is, is the fact that he's just been play, playing phenomenal lately, and so he's making his 10th start in a row. And the Arrows have never lost in this building, and one guy that knows about that is goalie Rob Dobson. And Dauber, if you're down there, this is a building the Arrows like to play in. I guess Dobson's not down there. Oh, I am. Oh, there. You can't hear me. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm sorry, but this is a building you guys like to play in. Yeah, it's a small building. You get into it quick. You know, things happen very quick out there because it is so small. And, you know, Gams has played here a long time, and uh, a lot of people have played in here a lot. So it's it's a good building. It gets you into the game early, and it keeps you in it throughout the whole contest. All right. Puck is back at the arrow end. Underway with action again. Towns and near side had two goals last night in Indianapolis, which was enough for the shootout, get him to the shootout, but not enough to win it. Puck goes into the Michigan zone. Hustling back is Brad Berry to touch, and icing is the call. Well, uh, the, you know the Arrows are going to be playing pretty uh, loose tonight. They have really nothing to lose uh, as far as the stats are concerned, and Michigan definitely wants to keep uh, on their little roll. They, they don't want to fall too far back here, and they want to solidify some spots for the uh, for the playoffs, of course. Well, and Michigan's in a tight battle with the Indianapolis Ice. They both have 90 points coming into tonight's game, and Claude Noel, their head coach, wants them playing well, but he also wants to have positioning going into the playoffs. Off the draw, the Arrows have got it, and it's Miles O'Connor turning in behind the net. He'll feather a pass, far side, yo. Get it out at center, and Freer moves it up ice. Freer dumped it into the Indi or into the Michigan zone. Still haven't arrived totally greener. <laughs> Buck comes near side, Cote. And the ice is out, at, or cleared out at center ice, and Kevin Meehan cleared it, but we've got a penalty as Dan O'Halloran is our referee, and he's got a tripping penalty here in the early going. It'll be Patrick Cote going to the box for Michigan, and the Arrows will get their first crack on the power play. Well, Cote spent plenty of time in the box the last time these two teams played, uh, which was last Saturday, and he takes the first penalty tonight. The Arrows will go on the power play. So far this year, they're ranking the IHL's 14th at 16.9% and have done pretty good as, as of late. The last night in Indianapolis, both their goals that they scored were on the power play, and the, the big man, Graham Townsend, uh, who's not on the ice right now, but uh, I'm sure you will see him on the power play, scored both of them. Off the draw, Arrows have it. Mark Lamb turning left side. Lamb trying to move it down. He's watched by Langenbrunner. Back to the line. Oh. But the shot smacked wide. Rebound came up. Sintego shoots. Great save by Fernandez. And the puck is picked up and cleared down the ice. Oh. There, there was more players in the crease than, uh, than about than Fernandez was. I tell you what, he couldn't find the rebound there. And it was a good thing his defenseman was able to shovel that one down the ice. Arrows moving up. A pass way out of the range of 
Slichenko. And it's Dennis Smith to clear it down the ice for Michigan. Campbell comes out to slow, and Mark Lamb will turn it around. A minute 25 to go in the Aero Power play. Mark Lamb starts to break out. He'll move it up ice. Lamb. Get it to the left side for Hurl, but he'll gently roll it in. But Dennis Smith is back to play it. Smith in the corner. Jams the puck to Jim Storm. He escorts it to Langenbrunner, who didn't play a week ago. He's been battling an injury here and hasn't played in the last couple of K-Wing contests as the puck came out at center and then back in. That is offsides. And you're going to see that uh, definitely with a lot of the teams, especially the ones the Arrows play the remainder of this season. Uh, you might not see guys in the lineup that you're used to seeing for that reason. They're not going to probably rest a few guys here and there, try and get them rested up for the playoffs. And, uh, of course, you know, the last thing a team wants to do that is going to make it into the playoffs is get some injuries to their top players. So they're going to be careful. You mentioned that Graham Townsend scored both power play goals last night. He's out there with Mark Freer, Sylvain Turgeon, Carl Valamont, and Steve Jakes. Off the face off, the K-Wings have it. It's Brian Curran. He's watched by Freer and a shot right back down the ice. A minute to go in the power play, and Jakes will go back to play in behind the net. Jakes gives the puck to Freer. He'll move it up and out at center ice. Pass comes to Carl Valamont. He'll jam one into the K-Wing zone. It'll bound to the near side. Freer digs it out, base in the right circle. Freer takes a bump from Barry. Skate to skate in the corner. Townsend loosens it up, though. Townsend gives to Turgeon. Sylvain Turgeon rolls it down to Freer in behind the net. Playing peekaboo with the defense. Scoops it back. Valamont the drive from the circle, but he cranked it high and wide. It came back to the line. Jakes pounds it to Turgeon. Heads in, shoots. Blocked by Curran. Picked up by Valamont. Out of left circle, top of the slot. Jakes, he wide, shoots, blocked it, hit Turgeon. And again, the arrow have it. Valamont to Freer. In behind the net, trying to shake off a Brad Berry check. Freer pulls up back to the line for Valamont. Getting set on the power play, which is down to 13 seconds. Jakes to Valamont. Out of his reach, he had to chase it down. Left point. Turns with a long drive. Fernandez saves. Rebound! Oh, Fernandez is there to make the save as Manny Fernandez was down lunging around, trying to scramble for that loose puck, and he'll finally hold on with five seconds to go on the power play. I'm sure Sylvain Turgeon wants that one back. He's a guy that's not afraid to shoot it, but Valamont gets one on net, and an unbelievable toe save by Fernandez, but Turgeon just whacks away at it, but he had the defenseman right on him, taking the stick away from him, and I tell you what, it just bounced around in there. Turgeon just couldn't get a handle on it, otherwise it'd be one nothing for the Arrows. Quickly, Rob Dobson, question for you. What is the book on Manny Fernandez? How do you beat him? Well, he's your uh, typical I guess French style goaltender he's uh, gonna go down a lot he plays his angles pretty good but he is down on the ice quite a bit so any success that we've had against him we seem to be able to get the rebound past him plus score up high on that first shot and I think he's the kind of guy that if you're patient and you can hang on to the puck for that extra second you'll get him to commit and be able to get the get the puck by him but it's just a, a matter of uh, pounding at home. Puck is controlled by the arrows Sean O'Brien smacked it back into the K-wing zone and they'll move it out at center. Goose have to Mike Donnelly. And across the line, broken up by the arrow defense. Yo was there to chip it away. We're four minutes into the contest. Scoreless. K-Wings dump it in. Icing is indicated. O'Connor goes back. Icing the call. We take time out. 16.03 to go in the first. We are scoreless. This is Saturday Night on Ice. For Mike Greenlay begins in about a week or so when the season ends, and you got to spend the summer without calling games with me. <laughs> I'll be mowing lawns. <laughs> you need someone to rake the leaves? <laughs> Don't lose my number. Here's O'Connor who bangs one down the ice. It's loose at center, jumped on by a lamb, and he'll turn it around in his own end. Scamper to center, pass ahead for Malgunas, and it's dumped into the Michigan zone. Malgunas will chase after it. Dennis Smith got there. He's bumped by Malgunas. This is a rink that might benefit a guy like Malgunas, a guy that just chases the puck carrier and tries to hit him. Small rink he can get to, and Malgunas is a very good skater. He's an above average skater in this league, and perhaps a guy like that can catch up to the K-Wings and wreak a little havoc in a game like this. He's out at center ice, and here is Brian Curran. He'll flip the puck into the air to end, and Troy Gamble will slow behind the cage. Sean O'Brien is there. O'Brien moves it from left to right. O'Brien played a week ago in this building and played pretty well. He's been rewarded with a play tonight. Puck dumped in. Here's another icing call coming up as Brian Curran is there. He will touch it, icing the call. Five minutes gone in the first no score. Well, you've seen Dave Tippett move things around a little bit, and of course, uh, out on the ice right now is Slipchenko, Baskatov, and Mike Maurice, and he's got Mike Maurice out there, and you could put Mike Maurice or uh, Mike Yo, uh, the, two, the two Mikes, uh, the two forward Mikes, I should say, and 
Uh, they both do a very similar job out there. They can crash and bang and create room for those two guys that really like to move the puck around. I guess you could say you want to be like Mike. Hey, don't miss out on the Arrows' last regular season home game. It's Fan Appreciation Day. Every fan entering the Summit will receive a team poster. Prizes will be handed out throughout the entire game. You can be a lucky winner, so come see the Arrows battle the Detroit Vipers on Sunday for the 14th. Right now, the Arrows in a battle, scoreless. Five minutes into the contest from Wing Stadium. Mike Bonis turning in his own end. He'll flip the puck off the boards. Held in by Curran. Long shot is blocked by Hurl, but turns it away. Baskatov couldn't corral it. Here's Storm with a drive. It was blocked by Maurice, and he'll come out at center. Three on two. The pass for Slivchenko. He'll barrel in. Dropped it back for Baskatov. Igor cuts in, makes a move. He's in a goal, shoots, and he ripped the wrist shot just wide of the net. Back to the line. Krupke cuts it over Slivchenko. Finds a man left side. Hurl, but drive, and a blocker save made by Fernandez. Baskatov had it in the corner. Gives to Slivchenko as they set up. Slivchenko Go to the line. Chipped it down, hurled by slow by Fernandez, and he had to cover up, and he will hold on with 14.20 to go in the first on a scoreless hockey game. Smart play by Fernandez as he just pulls that one back into his crease and covers it up. You know, a lot of goaltenders would be uh, would, would just dump that one out over along the boards, and his team would keep running around in their zone, and a guy like Slavchenko would definitely pot it in the net. So a good thing that the uh, goaltender uh, did the smart thing and covered it up. Well, Vadim Slavchenko in a three-game point streak coming into tonight's game. He's got two goals, three assists, five points in the span. The 24 goals that he's accrued so far this year leads the team. It's tied for the lead. Off the draw. Off the draw. It's picked up by Michigan. And third down at center. Brad Barry looking into the arrow end. Out of the net, Troy Gamble swings it along the boards. It's knocked away, though, and the K-Wings have it. A-Wings turning left side. It is put back by Mark Bourne for the line. Dennis Smith held it. In there's Neil Brady, and it goes out of play with 13.56 to go. Neil Brady, an interesting story, is he was a first-round draft pick of the New Jersey Devils. He's having a worse season this year than he did last year, but I think the big story on Neil Brady, which makes him your favorite player, is the fact that he was at your wedding last year. Yeah, that must be it. Well, actually, Neil Brady had a tough year, uh, partly due to injuries, and, uh, yeah. you know, a part, partly because of uh, that jaw injury, and I talked to him, actually, after last time we played him last week, and I said, you broke your jaw twice, didn't you? He said, yeah, I, I couldn't believe it. I, I got out there, broke my jaw, I recovered, came back, and I broke it again, and the doctors still don't know what's wrong with it, so he's had a little trouble with that and that slowed him down slightly he's ready to take this face off and he wins it to the near side Barry but it was chipped away by Townsend arrows have two on one Townsend with the L Townsend in on goal wait cuts right in made the great move but he lost the puck made a terrific move but just couldn't finish he couldn't hold on to the puck and it's Dennis Smith back in his own end the way by Townsend added near side Freer trying to move it down for Townsend in the corner right back for Freer Arrows trying to move the puck back to the line. Steve Jenks, long wrist shot, went way wide of the net. Townsend was dumped into the Michigan net. The K-Wings come out with it, three on two. Freer trying to hustle back and join the rush. He will, and the Arrows thwart that rush. That is offsides on the K-Wings, and the faceoff will come back to center ice. Well, I'll tell you what, Adam, it's uh, too little, too late for the Arrows. In uh, January, they looked like they got off to a good start. February was a pretty good month for them. And March is the month that really killed them. Of course, April, they're 0-1-1. One and, one. and I tell you what, that, that March is what really hurt them, and uh, Dave Tippett has said that. Well, and one thing about Dave Tippett, and, and you'll hear about it throughout the year, is the way his team has backed him up in the interviews. They, they love him, and they hope that uh, he will have that interim tag removed as, and just become the head coach. They would love it. He has done such a terrific job, and we will find no other coach as prepared as Dave Tippett when he gets into a game. It's amazing. I told him uh, once I said, you know, if you're really nice, you will buy a computer on the bench. Here's a shot by Conway right on Fernandez. The save and it's scooped away. Now it is Mark Lamp. Back to Kershaw. Wrist shot is blocked. And the K-Wings come out with it. Jamie Langenbrunner. He'll move down the left side at center. Dump the puck into the Houston zone. Karim Fireside for Kershaw. And it's reversed away, but the K-Wings have got it. In behind the net, it's Kevin Meehan battling in there. It's picked up. Here's Langenbrunner. Snuff shot. It was blocked. It never made it to Campbell. And the arrows come away with it. Turgeon uh, pass. It was intercepted by me. I don't know where he was trying to go with that. Now we're going to have a fight between Sean O'Brien and Patrick Cote. This stems from last week. Cote about three inches taller, two inches taller. Cote with an uppercut that caught O'Brien a little bit. Another uppercut that might have grazed him. O'Brien now just holding on. Cote's got the reach. O'Brien, who's got the strength, but can't get the right hand free. 
Right now, just kind of circling. Cote with a left, but O'Brien answered with a right. Another right from O'Brien that might have clipped the face of Cote. Well, O'Brien's a tough kid. He's uh, really solidly built, oh. and he's got some big hands on him. If he can get any loose, he might do some damage in there. Cote trying to fire back. This turned into a pretty good bout. Cote re rearing back right, but O'Brien answered with a right hand. This is a heavyweight bout, and look at O'Brien wailing away at, oh, at Cote, but Cote standing there and taking it. What is it? Is his face made of leather? Cote firing back with another right. What a bout! Oh, man, and O'Brien, look at how tired he is, still wailing away. Then Cote answers with a sharp right. Oh, boy! Put the kids to bed. Wake Grandma up. Tell her that the game is on. 12.33 to go in the first. It might be scoreless, but, boy, a 10-round bout between O'Brien and Cote, and we'll have more action right after this. Scoreless from Michigan, the fight between Sean O'Brien and Patrick Cote, and let's go down to Rob Dobson. Dobber, your thoughts on that bout? Well, that's uh, Mike better than what you get watching Mike Tyson fight. But, uh, <laughs> you know, that's a good one. Now, Obi showed last week that he's a big, tough kid, and uh, he's here to play. He's here to earn a spot on the team maybe for next year or to get the attention of other people. And, you know, he didn't back down from anybody, and he was able to get his hand loose and get some good punches there, so it was good. There's a shot for the fight by Sergey Gusev and Pete Campbell. Nothing lead. Well, that one was right off the draw, and it goes right to Gusev at the point, and he blasts one in. It's his ninth goal of the season, and it seemed to go through a screen. And Troy Gamble didn't react until the puck was already by him, and so that'll give the K-Wings a 1-0 lead on a shot right off the draw. The arrows really falling back on their heels real quick there, and I tell you what, just a real quick shot through a screen, and not very much chance for Gamble, who really didn't see it coming through. As you mentioned, ninth of the year, he's a third round draft pick by the Dallas Stars in last year's entry draft. Puck in the arrow end. It's dug out by Sylvain Turgeon, and he'll move it up and out of the end. His lead pass just eluding Conroy. He fights for it with Brian Curran, then Curran went down. Loose puck dug out by Robert Petrovitsky. And here come the K-Wings, three on two. Donnelly across the line, gives to Shane Peacock. Shoots, it went wide of the net. And Turgeon is there. Turgeon flipped the puck along the boards, held it in the line. Gusev slams it down. Peacock rolled it right in. Shot mark, Gamble, rebound. Who reaching for it at the last moment but couldn't get the shot away for the Michigan K-Wing. He was in there. It was Mike Donnelly trying to lunge for that. And here comes Travis Richards. Dumped it into the arrow, and, and Steve Jakes goes back. 1-0 Michigan on Sergey Gusev's ninth of the year. Puck is going to hit the K-Wings, and do they have too many men on the ice? Well, I, I don't know what he's calling right now. Yeah. I think the linesman might be in there calling too many men on the ice, and that would, of course, give the Arrows their second power play of the game. They didn't score on their first, and it looks like O'Halloran has gone to the timekeeper, and he is going to say... Too many men on the ice. Yeah, Dave Cassidy, the linesman that's making the call. Cassidy, along the far wall, here's a guy that's done a terrific job as a linesman. He was one of the other linesmen in the IHL All-Star game this year in uh, Houston. And uh, he said to me, in fact, it was nice enough. I got to play golf with him in the uh, tournament there. And uh, Dave Cassidy, uh, a lot of fun chatting. He's a good guy and really enjoys uh, doing the game. He said I had some of the best time in, in well, Houston. These guys are in a pretty tough position. They have to make calls at... Uh, are going to be unpopular with one team or the other. You know, there's there's very rarely a call that's going to be popular with both teams. And so a uh, pretty good call there as there was a little bit of a communication mix up on the bench and they sent out an extra guy. And so the Wings will get a penalty and serving the penalty will be Zach Boyer. So the K-Wings with their version of Led Zeppelin's communication breakdown and it's going to cost them a power play and the Arrows will get their second man advantage. Puck to the near side, Freer digs it out. Townsend in there fighting for it. They continue to grapple for it and finally the puck frozen in play whistled down. So 1-0 Michigan leads it on that Sergei Gusev blast. 147 left in the too many men on the ice penalty being served by Zach Boyer. 11-16 to go in the first. Assists on that goal, Curran and Petrovitsky. And as you said, 731 on the first period. That was an even strength goal because both O'Brien and Cote were in the box. That was right after the fight on the draw down deep in the arrow zone. Off the draw, the arrows have it on the pop play. Hurlbutt scooped it to Slivchenko, who lost his balance. That's something you do not see from Slivchenko. He's a terrific skater, and it just kind of got into his skates there, and the puck is poked out at center. 
Arrows regroup. It's Mark Lamb. Creams one into the Michigan zone. First one there is Slavchenko, but it got by him. Langenbrunner cleared, but not out. Hurl butt, right point. Gives the puck to Mark Freer. Freer getting set. Scooped it down to Slavchenko. Shuffle the pass to Freer as the arrows cycle the puck along the perimeter. Mark Lamb at a left point. Getting set. He's got a minute 13 on the power play. Lamb cutting in. He's got Freer back door. Here's a shot. Snap just wide by Slavchenko. Puck is centered. Pearl Butt held it in, barely. It came down low for Townsend, but it's poked right over to Jamie Langenbrunner, and it shot right back down the ice. Under a minute to go in the power play. 10.23 to go in the first period. The Arrows don't have as much room to maneuver as they did last night in Indianapolis at Market Square Arena, so they're going to have to make quicker passes, and they're going to have to be on the money. This is their fifth game in nine nights, or I should say in eight nights, on the road. Tomorrow will be their ninth night on the road. They don't get back till midday in Houston as the puck is shot in and then frozen along the boards. Play whistled down. 10.04 to go in the first in a 1-0 hockey game. The Arrows seem to be playing pretty hard out here. Uh, I like to see that. They, they're definitely not going to lay down uh, for anybody, and I'm sure if they can play spoiler, they're going to try. Al Conroy, who's played in every single game this year, here's a guy that's still on fire, even though he had his point streak snap last night. He had uh, six assists in that span, no goals. He's five goals, six assists, 11 points in the last 13 games. Buck came back to the line. O'Connor scooped it to Valamont. Rolled it down along and behind the net. It comes to Conroy along the boards. Back to the line. O'Connor getting set. Valamont cranked the drive. Blocked by Fernandez. Puck in front. It's blown away as the arrow's trying to move it in there. Pushed along the boards by Lawrence. He's tied up by Conroy. And they continue to battle for it. Arrow's trying to dig it out in there. Yo's in there as well. And finally play whistled down with 11 seconds left in the Zach Boyer penalty. 9.40 to go in the first period. The K-Wings lead it 1-0. As the shots in this first period, Michigan with two shots. The Arrows with five. Great blast by Valamont. Uh, he played the left point on the first power play. Now we see him over here on the right point. I think that was just uh, maybe a switch that they made uh, in, in the middle of the play. But he's getting blasts from, from both sides of the rink. And... Getting some good opportunities in front for his team, too. You want to get those shots on goal. Shot came on. It was blocked by Fernandez. Balamont lets one fly. Again blocked by Fernandez. Conroy trying to gather it in. Conroy spun and burned in the corner. Curran's got him tied up. And here's Mike Gill as the penalty is over. Gill behind the cage. Looks out in front. He's harassed by Barry. Came down near side for Maurice. Maurice right side. Back to the line. Jakes. That was blocked by Fernandez. That's jumped on by Zach Boyer as Conroy looks at Brian Curran. Are they going to go? Brad Barry trying to keep Conroy cooled off. And Conroy continues to skate away. Those two might have later discussions. Walk is back in the arrow end. They continue to fight for it with nine minutes to go. Loose puck dug out by the K-Wings. It is Zach Boyer. Gives to Brad Barry pinching from the point. It eluded Maurice, but he'll be able to chase it down in the corner. Cleared, but not out. Travis Richards shoots, but was blocked. No, it made it to Gamble. It somehow came through and reached to Gamble. And the arrows dig it out. Trying to clear the zone, but it's Derek Smith who poked it away from Michigan. Back to the line. It's rolled along the boards. The K-Wings scoop it away. Derek Smith bumped by Jakes. Zach Boyer screaming down the right side. Cuts it down to Jim Storm. Make that Kevin Meehan, rather. Meehan in the circle. Gives to Boyer. Centered one, but Jakes takes it away. He cannot clear it. Jake's trying to shake off a check and finally jammed it out at center, but there is Dennis Smith to shoot it into the arrow end. Falamont, he'll finally ice the puck, and that's what the arrows need, and we will take a timeout. 8.09 to go in the first period. It's the K-Wings 1, the arrows no score. We'll be right back after this. one nothing. K-Wings lead it, and the last scoring chance by the Michigan K-Wings. Well, one of the reasons Troy Gamble has been so successful has been some of his acrobatics. He makes a blocker save, and then he swats it away with his glove. Eventually, Mike Maurice kicks it in his skates and dumps it down the ice for the icing call, but Gamble sharp through the crowd there. Off the draw, K-Wings have got it. It's Petrovicki right side. Petrovicki, a peacock, quick shot blocked by Krupke, and the arrows are up ice, but they threw it off skates, can't clear it. Here come the K-Wings. Peacock is into Mike Donnelly, getting set, drilled the shot, gamble the save, didn't know where it went. It's behind him. He'll cover up and hold on. Good shot there, and Gamble turns around on it. Gets hit, he gets hit in the pad, and he probably didn't even feel that shot as it hit the padding on his, uh, on his uh, leg, and he turned around looking for the rebound, but it popped out the other side. It's a good thing his defensemen were there to help him cover it up as they jam away at it. 
but <laughs> guys flying all over the place and Gord Krupke doing his role there throwing bodies around and you can't score a goal if you're laying on your back and <laughs> I think that's Gord Krupke's motto. So they'll face it off in the circle to the left side of Troy Gamble. 7.50 to go first period as the K-Wings lead it on a Sergei Gusev goal from the point. Lamb to take the draw against Robert Petrovitsky. Top of the puck, it is controlled by Krupke. They'll scoop it into the corner. It's jumped on by the Arrows, cleared to the line, not out. Arrows have really struggled in this period, trying to clear pucks out of their end. Fighting for it is Hurl, but he's got it tied up with Petrovitsky at the point. Now the K-Wings come in, and here is Mike Donnelly. Into the slot, dropped it back, Goose have another drive, and that made it to Gamble. He made the save, and it's cleared out at center and back into the Michigan zone. Gusev hustles in behind, reverse the puck near side. Brian Kern as he's watched by Lamb. And the K-Wings have got it, Petrovitsky. Out at center, turned away by Kershaw. And the Arrows go back for it. Miles O'Connor is forechecked by Shane Peacock. He played most of the year as a defenseman, but as of the last several games, Claude Noel, the K-Wing head coach, has got him playing up front. He's a very gifted offensive defenseman, and they figure with the offense that he's got, they'll put him up front. Puck is back at center ice. Igor Bashkatov. Bring it over to Steve Jake's right side. Turned it up ice for Slivchenko. Slivchenko across the line gives to Maurice. Feather one in front. Slivchenko with a great effort, but there's Fernandez to make the save. What makes that play almost successful is the speed of Slivchenko. He has, uh, as we talked about so many times, he has good acceleration. And in order to create a play, you have to drive to the net and create an opening. Slivchenko does so, and he gets the puck. It's a good give and go as he dishes it. Then he drives. Maurice knows that. And he drives it back to uh, Slavchenko. Slavchenko has to reach a little bit for it and pokes it towards Fernandez. But that's always a dangerous play. And a, it's a smart play. A give and go is, is one of the most successful plays in hockey. It is in a lot of sports. Basketball you see at work. Well, it's confusing to the defenseman as the defensive team as they have to uh, make a decision. When you make the other team make a decision, then that's where mistakes are. Uh, that's where mistakes happen. Well, and you talked about it in the Oshman's game plan going back to base. That's as basic as it comes right there. That's that's first of the year hockey, isn't it? Yeah, Arrow's playing some good good hockey here. I'm I'm glad to see it. We talked about heart and desire. You're seeing it right now. Off the draw, the K-Wings have got it. Langenbrunner smoked it down at center. And into the arrow end, Gamble will come out and cover up with six and a half to go. And a couple of K-wings there. And kind of looked like the parting of the Red Sea there. I tell you what, from a goaltender's point of view, that's the scariest play. Uh, and, you know, we talked about it before when uh, actually a, a few games back, uh, I can't remember the, the goaltender who it was, but I tell you what, he had to come out and make the play. And you said, boy, he didn't hesitate a second. And that's what a goaltender has to do. He cannot hesitate. He's either got to go or he's got to stop. If you're going to make a mistake, it may as well be a huge one. Face off in the circle to the left side of Troy Gamble. As you get a look at Gamble, not much of a chance. He just had to get out there. I mean, he had it clearly beaten. Does a smart thing by laying his paddle down to make sure it doesn't go underneath him. Off the draw, the K-Wings pursue, but the Arrows have got it. Yo, trying to get it out of the zone, and finally does. It is controlled by Sean O'Brien, threw it off the skates, and here comes Zach Boyer, moving down the left side. Shoots, Gamble save, rebound, it's cleared away. And the Arrows trying to get it out of there, cannot. K-Wings another chance. Travis Richards left side. Richards moving down left wing, getting set, centered. Oh, one time shot fanned on by Jim Storm. And the Arrows are out at center. Yo dumped it in. Gonna go down into the corner. And here's a penalty coming up, a delayed penalty. And it could be on the K-Wings. And we'll bring you the Arrow power play when we return. Timeout on the ice. It's the K-Wings one, Arrows no score. Back in Michigan as the Michigan K-Wings lead it one to nothing and Troy Gamble trying to keep it that way as he makes a good save down the wing as Boyer comes in and he blasts one. Gamble great on his angle and makes a good butterfly save but even better the defenseman clearing that puck out of there not allowing a rebound. Faceoff will be in the circle to the left side of Emmanuel Fernandez who's faced 11 shots thus far in the game. Stopped them all. And the Arrows will be on their third power play of the night 0 for 2 thus far. It is Miles O'Connor back into his own end for Mike Hurlbutt. Arrows out there up front with Kershaw, Lamb, and Conroy. Pass misses Lamb, and right back down the ice it goes. The Arrows on their third power play of the game. 0 for 2 on the first two. Here come the Houston Arrows. And they'll bust it out right side for Mark Lamb. Lamb ahead for Kershaw. Cuts in with a drive. Saved by Fernandez. 
and he'll hold on to it. And, you know, I want to go down to Rob Dobson really quick. And, Dobbert, my question to you is, you know, two games in two nights, normally not a lot of fatigue, but when this is the eighth day on the road, does fatigue play a factor tonight? Well, I think one thing about the road trip is the games have been pretty spread out. Uh, we've had a couple days off, other than the 3-3 three and three last weekend. Uh, we were able to have a day off on Thursday with not really a lot of practice time, so it's not too bad. And I think when you get to the end of the season, you know, it's, it is a little bit of fatigue, but I think now especially is that we're playing for a lot of pride and we just love to play the game, and that's the bottom line. Yeah. What, are, what are your thoughts here, 519 to go in the first? How's the team look? Well, I think we look pretty good. We've had a little bit of trouble so far getting the puck out, but... You know, I think that comes maybe the travel today or what have you, but we're start, starting to make some better decisions. We've had some good chances on the power play. Hopefully soon we can take advantage of one. All right, Terjean moves it down on the power play. He'll give it to Mark Lamb. Getting set right side. Lamb cuts in, rolled it down for Terjean. He's tied up along the boards. And here is a puck near side. We've got another penalty coming up. And it's going to be an elbow on Al Conroy. Well, and it's against uh, Brian Curran, who he was jostling with earlier on in the game. And... You know, the unfortunate thing there is there was probably two incidences in front of that net, but the only one O'Halloran sees is Conroy giving the elbow back to Curran. So who guess who what gets called, and it evens up the penalty. Yeah, it's, it's called retaliation. He's not about to put the K-Wings down, too. No, and Al Conroy will take a penalty. Uh, he's, he, he, he's a kind of player that's not going to back down from anyone. And, and speaking of not backing down, we, we talked about how he's the only Iron Man left on the team this year. He, a few games back, he actually the last game they played at the Summit, uh, he had a potentially, uh, you know, really serious injury there as he got a pretty good Charlie horse. But tell you what, he took care of his leg and he worked it out and got uh, Jerry Mines, the trainer, to help him out with it. And they, they really did a lot of work on it. And he's still back out on the ice. And... Tell you what, uh, there's a lot of guys that would have taken that injury and just not really uh, been able to play the next game. In a minute 11, the arrows will be shorthanded for the first time tonight. Last night was the first time in 11 games that the arrows had not allowed a power play goal. In fact, overall, 17 of 19 coming into tonight's game where they had allowed a power play goal. So last night snapped a string of 11. It is Robert Petrovicki who centered one for Michigan. It came out in front and it scooped down at center. Brad Barry trying to flip one ahead, and it's Petrovicki near side. He's watched by Jakes, and Petrovicki will go back to his own blue line. Brad Barry, four check by Slipchenko, fired it off the skates of Petrovicki, and here comes Donnelly in across the line. Donnelly watched by O'Brien, but tapped to the near side. It got centered, and Dennis Smith is there. One nothing Michigan. Smith hooked it into the arrow end. O'Brien is there, flipped to Slipchenko. And he'll move it away from harm's way. We're four on four for another 20 seconds, and then the K-Wings will get 49 seconds of a power play. Pass out at center for Igor Baskatov. Oh, turned it over. Couldn't find the Slavchenko pass. Here comes Storm left side. Waiting on goal, but then thwarted away by Valamont. Battle for the puck. Storm is there. They continue to grapple for it in four seconds. Out of the box will come Travis Richards. Now he's out. It's a power play for Michigan. It is Langenbrunner. Base of the right circle, getting set on the power play, which is down to 40 seconds now. Along the board, it's flipped along, and here come the K-Wings. They battle. Here's Langenbrunner right side. Langenbrunner getting set as it came back to the line, and it's controlled left side. Here's Dennis Smith. He lost the puck. K-Wings have got it. K-Wings move it with 20 on the power play. A puck came out in front. Back to the line, it's Dennis Smith, looped along the boards, and it's Jamie Langenbrunner. Here's a puck back to the line, Smith lets a shot go. That's kicked away by Gamble, and the K-Wings have it. Back to the line, Smith worked it down for Zach Boyer. Boyer getting set, looped it down, puck got center, went off the skates of Storm, and it's right back out at center. Penalty's over, teams are at five aside. K-Wings turn it around with 2.50 to go in the first period. Buck is in the arrow end. Here's a stuff shot that got into Gamble. He made the save as he hugged the post. Sean O'Brien. Heard it out at center. And Michigan has got it. Buck loose at neutral lines. And here is a lead pass for Dennis Smith to make that Derek Smith who had it. Then it was chopped back into Michigan territory. Hernandez came out of the net. Yo trying to play it. Neil Brady shoveled it out at center ice after he was belted by Kevin Malgunas. Kupke, who will be our first intermission guest, lobbed the puck ahead. It went down the ice, and Arrows have got it. 
Trying to flip it right back down and into the Michigan end. Manny Fernandez is there to play it, and that will... No, now he, oh, he was going to play it, and that was going to, I thought, for a minute, negate the icing, and instead he let it touch, and that is icing. Tonight's Shots on Goal are sponsored by Suzuki. Ask anyone who owns one. The Arrows 11 shots, the K-Wings 9. As Manny Fernandez has stopped all 11 shots, Troy Gamble has faced nine K-Wing shots and has stopped eight. And as we touched upon, making his 10th straight start, this is the second time this year he's had to do that. Yeah, he's, he's been called upon to really come up big. And actually in February, he was playing uh, very similar to the way he's playing right now. And uh, I tell you what, when you, when you have a hot goaltender, you got to play him. Even though Rob Dobson was playing good in Kansas City, it's, it's, it's a tough situation when you have two goalies that can do the job, and one of them's really hot at the, at the particular time. Turgeon flings one out at center, and Gusev wrapped it into the arrow end. O'Connor smacked it out at center. Conroy is there. And it's worked back. Here's a drive by Turgeon, a big rocket that went wide. Now jam near side, Conroy trying to move one in. Gusev is there to pick it up and motor out at center. Sergey Gusev in across the line. That is offsides with a minute 34 to go. One-nothing Michigan as the Arrows trying to get something to tie this thing up. Well, I tell you what, Adam, uh, overall the Arrows have lost seven games in a row twice this season, and that, that can really hurt you when you get on a losing streak. You try and stop the bleeding, but you really can't. And at home, it was eight at, on the road. The most was four, but I tell you what, that can really kill you as a team. And uh, halfway through those streaks, you try and do anything you can to stop them, but sometimes getting on a roll, uh, you get to go in the wrong way. Draw controlled by Michigan, dumped into Campbell, made the stop. O'Connor turns in behind the cage with a minute and a half remaining, and the puck is shot down the ice. Fernandez will come out, but he'll let it go to Sergey Gusev. Reverse the puck, fire side, and here's Brian Curran, who fired one ahead to Petrovitsky. He's attacked by Conroy. Petrovitsky dumped it in. Gamble lunging for it, knocked it down. Jakes went into the corner to flip it away, and it's out at center ice. Conroy jammed it ahead for Valamont. Petrovitsky was there. He ran into Turgeon, but he got it in to the man in there, Steve Jakes. Jakes hit behind the net. He'll turn and blast one along the boards, and it'll go right back down the ice. There's Brad Berry to touch, icing the call, and the faceoff will come back into the arrow end as K-Wings lead it one to nothing, and Brad Berry, one of their top defensemen uh, for the K-Wings, he's played parts of three seasons as a Michigan K-Wing, and of the three seasons he has played as a Michigan K-Wing and or Kalamazoo Wing, he has been an IHL All-Star in all three of them. And he'll set up for this face-off. He hasn't scored a goal yet this year, but he has five assists for five points. And a face-off now to the right side of Troy Gamble. Off the face-off, it's Hurlbutt. Hold one near side for Graham Townsend. He'll motor out at center ice. Townsend right side, dumped one in. It went behind the net. Dumped on by Maurice. Give it to Freer. Trying to find a man to pass to. He's got Langenbrunner on his case. They grapple for it along the boards. Now Townsend in there to lend a hand. Here is Freer reaching for it. It got through skates, fished out by Freer, but Lawrence and Maurice were shouldering into the corner, and the puck frozen once again. Dan O'Halloran and the referee saying, come on, play on. And they continue to fight for it some more, and it'll bounce out in front. There's Jim Storm to take over. Storm moves it out at center. It hit hurl button. We're down to the final 10 seconds, and the puck shot up and out of play with 8.9 seconds to go in the first period. And Dave Tippett urging his troops, come on, let's skate hard here in the final eight seconds, maybe surprise him with a quick goal. Now, the other coach on the other side, Claude Noel, here's a guy that's been in kind of a tough situation, comes in replacing Ken Hitchcock, who, as you know, was hired by the Dallas Stars. The Dallas Stars are the parent club of this K-Wing team. And Claude Noel has come in and tried to settle things down because, you know, the Dallas Stars have called a lot of guys to their club. I mean, they had Todd Harvey here for a little bit, and then they lost him, and guys have been coming in and out. They just got Mike Donnelly back yesterday. And it's got to be tougher for a coach like that where you've got the revolving doors. The buzzer will sound, and this first period comes to a close. 
Not a bad period by the Arrows. If they can work on getting the puck out of their end, uh, things could be a little different, but they've got to be pleased with the way things are right now. We've played 20 minutes of action in the first period. Our score from Wings Stadium, it's the Michigan Cane Wings 1. Houston Arrows go score. We will have more from Wings Stadium right after this. This is Saturday Night on Ice. It's 1-0. The K-Wings leading the Houston Arrows. Sergei Gusev getting his ninth goal of the season. And he gives the K-Wings the only goal. It was a right point slap shot that uh, beat Troy Gamble. And uh, that is the only goal of the period. The shots finished up 12-11 in favor of the Houston Arrows. Although, I don't know if they tested Manny Fernandez as well as perhaps they, they would have liked. But... Uh, Again, Dave Tippett's got to be pretty pleased about the way things have gone. While we've got a second here, update you on what's going to happen. The Arrows board a bus tomorrow, and then they are back home Wednesday taking on the Phoenix Roadrunners. Lots of seats available for that. and love to have you come out by dialing up the Arrows, or actually Ticketmaster at 629-3700. You know, the Arrows in the offseason made a big-time acquisition. Pete Dineen going into the American Hockey League and signing Gord Krumpke from the Adirondack Red Wings, and he has been an outstanding defenseman for the Arrows this year, and he is standing by with Mike Greenlee. Thank you, Adam. And as you said, I have Gord Krupke with me. And uh, Gord, you and I played midget hockey together. We were 15, 16 years old. You didn't think 10 years later we'd be sitting here together, did you? Isn't that something? <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, we we're 15 years old. It was a long time ago for both of us. And uh, it's kind of nice to be reunited with you again, Mike. Yeah, it's been, a, it's been a tough acquisition just trying to get you into the broadcast booth. But uh, touching on that period there, uh, the guys seem to be playing with a lot of heart and desire. That's going to make everybody pretty happy. Yeah, well, you know, we, we've got a lot of, a lot of heart in that, in that locker room and uh, it kind of hit everybody pretty hard yesterday when we found out that we were out of it. Uh, you know, at times it looked pretty slim for us, but there was still a chance. And, and now that, uh, you know, mathematically we are finished, uh, we still want to finish the year strong. We want to try and play some, some really good hockey and, and end it on a good note. Now, uh, you're one of the players uh, that have uh, signed a, a good long-term deal with the Houston Arrows and, um, and a, as also as an alternate captain. Uh, you, you, you take a lot of responsibility. What do you think some of the things that are going to have to happen this summer to, to try and get the Arrows to where they should be? Well, Mike, that's a tough question. <laughs> you know, uh, I think we've only got six players coming back uh, next year, and, and there's a lot of uh, big holes to fill. You know, we... we uh, We've got, I think, a pretty good nucleus for a good team uh, coming back next year. We've got some good leaders, and, and uh, that's totally up to management. We need, uh, you know, every kind of little piece of the puzzle, as you call it, and, and uh, hopefully Pete Deneen can find the right players, and, and we can get a, a winning team on the ice for next year. Now, you've played in the American Hockey League. Actually, you've won a Calder Cup, which is the equivalent of a Turner Cup uh, here in the IHL, and now after playing a, a full season uh, in the IHL, how do you think the leagues compare? Well, I think this league is improving, uh, you know, so much over the past couple of years. You, you have players in the NHL that, that are kind of borderline players, uh, and, and the NHL teams are bringing in uh, the younger guys. They don't have to pay them as much money, and, and you have your big superstars like your Gretzky's and Eisermans, and, and the, the kind of the players that are in the middle of the pack, like the Mark Lambs and the Turgeons, and those guys are coming down and, and making this league a much better league. I think the American League is more developmental, and, and this league is... Uh, Definitely a step ahead. Now, Dave Tippett, uh, you know, took over the team in the January. Then he's done a he's done a great job. How do you feel, and how do some most of the players feel about having him back for next season? Well, I'm very comfortable with it. I think Dave is a really good coach, and and uh, you know, I think he's done a, a tremendous job uh, with the hockey club since he's taken it over. Uh, you know, it, it seems that uh, the guys really respect him, and and uh, you know, it wasn't very long ago that Dave Tippett was a player, and uh, I think he relates to his players very well, and. And, uh, you know, he's got a lot of respect in that room. And I, I, uh, I would like to see him back. Uh, but that, again, is not my decision. That's up to, you know, higher authorities. All right, Gord, thanks for spending some time with us. And best of luck in the rest of the game. Thank you, Mike. All right, that was Gord Krupke, big defenseman for the Houston Arrows. And we'll be back to Wing Stadium right after this. Welcome back to Wing Stadium, everybody. Adam Gord alongside Mike Greenlee. And, uh, you know, Gord Krupke talked about the, the heart and desire of that team there in that uh, first period. It was good to see that. Well, definitely. I mean, we talked about that. It's good to see that uh, the players still want to win. And these guys, they like to play hockey. Nobody likes to lose. And I think you're going to see that uh, the remainder of the games that the Arrows play. They're just as uh, mad and sad that they're, not, uh, that they're not in the playoffs as everyone else. And you're going to see probably a very good effort the rest of this game and the remaining three. And I also like the comment Gord Krupke made about Dave Tippett. I think he echoed 
echoes a lot of the statement to the players. Oh yeah, I mean, and he and one good thing that he said is, and and which I remember really well is that he said, hey, Dave Tippett was just a player last year, so that's why he knows the, uh, the I guess the this day hockey attitude and uh, and how things are and as, as far as players how they think today, and yeah. I think that's what they respect the most. Thought to Troy Gamble in the first? I thought he was strong. It was kind of a it was kind of a funny game, a little scrambly uh, in front of the net and and a lot of bouncing pucks. It's always tough for a goaltender, so Gamble had a pretty good period. He made a couple of smart plays, a couple of good plays, and uh, and he needs the team to get a couple goals for him. Scoring somebody's going to be easy to do in the first period. There was only one goal scored in that first period, and it came off the stick of Sergei Gusev, his ninth of the year. At 7.31, Ryan Curran and Robert Petrovichki getting the assist, and the K-Wings have a 1-0 lead. And, uh, you know, for the K-Wings side of things, they had a good period as well. I mean, they played the game they wanted. Well, as you mentioned earlier, they're in a race to try and uh, lock in a, a good playoff spot. They're obviously going to make the playoffs, but these guys are all going for home ice advantage. They're all going for the best, uh, best advantage in the playoffs they can get because anything can happen in the playoffs, and I'm sure they know that. All right, it's 1-0. The K-Wings lead it, and we'll have more from Wing Stadium right after this. at Wing Stadium in Kalamazoo, Michigan. The K-Wings lead it by a score of a one to nothing. Adam Gordon, Mike Greenlay, and coming out in that second period, I think Rob Dobson summed it up pretty good. He said, just, hey, the biggest thing is get the puck out of our end. Oh, yeah, you got to stick close. Uh, keep the game tight, because when the arrows keep the game tight, they're usually right in there, and they sometimes come off with some good third-period heroics. Now, looking back at the, the highlights of that period, Troy Gamble, we talked about, made some great saves. Yeah, and he's going to have to keep making great saves, and I tell you what, this is a good one right here, a blast. It's from a sharp angle. Gamble makes a save though and he can't find the rebound but I tell you what sometimes you have to be lucky to be good good to be lucky and he makes a good save there as everyone piles down on top of him and sticks with it and that's uh, the big part of goaltending is sticking with us with a shot after you stop the first one now he's that was a reactionary save this one was a little different well this is a blast and it's actually deflected by his own player Carl Valamon in front and that's the toughest thing is it doesn't matter where the deflection is coming from just the fact that it's deflected he makes a save and then he swats the rebound over to the side so he did two jobs in one right there and how about that kid Sean O'Brien well a tough kid you know and he's working for a job next year he stood toe to toe with a very tough customer in uh, in Cote and I tell you what he's uh, doing a lot of work to, towards getting himself a job for next year he's not going to score you 50 goals as a defenseman but I tell you what he can play the good tough minded style of hockey that the arrows need and the first period stands brought to you by our local Texas Chrysler Plymouth 12-11, the Arrows outshot the Michigan K-Wings. The Arrows with 13 face-offs, the K-Wings with 8. Arrows went 0-3 for 3 on the power play. The K-Wings went 0-4-1 for 1 on the man advantage. The penalty killing has been solid. They did a good job last night to kill off the one there. And uh, it, it's been a, a very well-played hockey game. I remember in the 2-1 game, Dave Tippett was really happy about the way that played. It was one of those ugly games for the fans to watch, but it was a coach's delight. Well, that's what the players always say when they go on the road. They say, hey, we're not playing for our fans. It doesn't have to be pretty. Let's just get the win and get out of here. That's what they did last week. Let's see what they can do this week. All right. You know what? That's a good idea. Let's get out of here. It's one nothing. The K-Wings will bring you the second period right after this. About ready to start period number two. The K-Wings leading the Houston Arrows by a score of one to nothing. And Troy Gamble in that first period. Facing 11 K-Wing shots. The only goal that got by him, as we talked about, was that Sergei Gusev drive. But as far as the other thing goes for the Michigan K-Wings, their goaltender, Emmanuel Fernandez, well, the story on him was he faced 12 shots, stopped them all. Uh, he was tested on a couple, but I don't think he was tested like Gamble was in the first period. Well, yeah, and, but the, the thing about the shots that the Arrows got, uh, you, might, you might say, well, he wasn't tested, and you're right. A lot of shots were from the point, but you know what's going to test him is if the Arrows can get that second shot that he was giving a rebound on, and I think that's what the Arrows are working towards right now. All right. And we are just about ready to go. And for those of you watching on UPN 20, a good look at Manny Fernandez. Last, last year he was an IHL uh, All-Star as a rookie. Tell you what, he's uh, really doing well uh, in, in, uh, in getting better down here. That's what, that's what a lot of times these leagues are for, is to really get these goaltenders ready for that NHL. And right now, <laughs> doing some housework is a linesman you talked about earlier. Has, Jeez. has multiple jobs. You know what? My place is probably so dirty. I haven't been home in, in eight days. Why don't you get over there and squeegee my place? Yeah, just, just borrow that one. Take it home on the plane with you. All right. Well, we should be getting ready. Look at, look at Manny Fernandez. Tell him what to do. Well, you know what? When, but when I had to do that, I'd just grab it out of his hands and do it myself. That way, you know, you, you know what they say. If you want a job done right, you got to do it yourself. So. 
Well, coming up on the 14th of April, it's Fan Appreciation Day. Every fan will receive a team poster as the Arrows take on the Detroit Vipers. And you know, the Arrows are actually looking at it as Fan Appreciation Week because just before then on Wednesday, they play the Phoenix Roadrunners. You can get your tickets by contacting Ticketmaster at 629-3700. So fans, don't miss out on the final two regular season games. In fact, we know now that these are the final two games of this season. Lam Turjaw Conroy with Hurlbutt and Gord Krupke. Sticks down, drop of the puck. And the K-Wings have got it. Gusev dumped it into the Mishner, into the arrow end. Out of the net, Campbell. He'll slow for Krupke. Krupke turns near side, poked one ahead, and the arrows are out at center. Lamb had it jammed away. And there is Derek Smith to move it ahead. But Hurlbutt back at his own blue line. Gives the Terja. And it bounce one ahead. And Neil Brady is there to try and turn it around. And the arrows are there. Hurlbutt will fire it in. Out of the net, Fernandez. He'll turn in behind the net. And the K-Wings look to break out with it. Here's Brian Curran, who nearly turned that over. He did. Here's Conroy. Rolled it down the right side for Freer. He takes a bump from Brian Curran. And Smith trying to clear. Maybe it's that end of the ice. It's uphill. Teams are having trouble getting the puck out of that, that end. It's just it's sloped. As Falamont goes back. Has that been their secret all these years? It must be. It is Yo. He dumped the puck into the Michigan zone. Townsend, first one there. He centered one. Had a no-look pass. Yo nearly got there. And it's flipped away by Kevin Neum. Neum trying to break it out. It's taken away by Yo. It's definitely that end. Nobody can break it out of that end. It is Freer near side. Tacked into the wall by Boyer. Yo trying to jam one down. Freer to have a look at it, but Kevin Meehan is there. And here come the K-Wings. Out at center ice. Meehan drilled the puck into the arrow end. Comes his fireside. Jake's in a big collision and a penalty coming up as Cote was getting into it with O'Connor. And it'll be interesting to see who the call is on here. Well, it's on Miles O'Connor, and uh, Miles O'Connor might, if he doesn't watch it, get another penalty for... Uh, using his lip a little bit, <laughs> giving O'Halloran the, uh, uh, the lip treatment. While we're waiting, I want to go back down to Rob Dobson, and Dobber would like to find out what Dave Tippett was telling his troops there in the period intermission. Well, not a lot was said. Uh, the only basic thing was we'd given the puck up a lot in the gray zone, uh, the blue line, especially in our own end, and uh, most of their opportunities to score came off that, and we had some good chances to score, and really the whole game plan, we just, we were sticking to it other than we didn't get the puck out a few times, and uh, that's an important area for us, and take some more chances, and eventually we'll score a couple goals, but, you know, we'll kill this penalty off and get back at him and stick to things and keep playing arrow hockey. Is Dave Tippett a vocal guy in the locker room? I'm sorry? Is Dave Tippett a vocal guy in the locker room? Well, not really. Uh, you know, I, I think over the course of a year, you, get, you get, kind of get tired of getting preached to, and uh, Dave's been pretty good. He came in today, he's got a strict game plan, set it, told everybody what he wanted done, and uh, he comes in and does his little speech, and he's direct and to the point, and that's all that really need to be done. All right. Here's Al Conroy. Off the draw. Arrows have to kill off the power play. They killed off the last one in the first period. Here's Lamb with a quick shot and a save made by Fernandez. Short-handed goal would be very nice. Down by a goal. Here come the K-Wings. Richards, great one into the air when it smoked right out to Gamble. And tell you what, Greener, there's, there's a guy that's played in this rink a few times, didn't flinch a butt at all when he saw that come right in there. He knew it was coming right back to him. Well, you know, yeah, that's one thing you say, and it's a good point because I'll tell you what, a lot of goaltenders will know a rink that they've played in quite often, and Gamble, of course, has played in this rink, as you mentioned, when he played for Kalamazoo in 92-93, and that one just comes right to him. He says, I've seen that bounce before, and he covers it right back up, and uh, how many times have we seen uh, pucks go off the glass and everything and go into the net? Goaltender standing behind the net saying, oh, what happened? Well, we saw it a lot at the Summit, but now, I mean, we see it at a lot of rinks this year. Atlanta's got a sweet spot, and uh, Detroit's got one. It, it just depends, and, and the more you play in this league, the more you know. Here's a shot by Peacock through traffic. It hit Cote, cleared fireside. Gusev jammed one down for Petrovicki. Robert Petrovicki gives it to Patrick Cote as he's watched by Valamont. Petrovicki shakes off the check, cuts one back to the line. Donnelly, Mike Donnelly gives it near side for Shane Peacock as the K-Wings circle the puck along the boards. Petrovicki playing peekaboo, centered one. Here's a chance. Gusev shoots. He scores! Second goal of the game, Sergey Gusev, a power play goal, and the K-Wings take a 2-0 lead. Well, everyone's jammed down in front of the net, and I tell you what, that just makes Troy Gamble's job a lot more difficult, especially when he drops to his knees. 
The puck comes out to the point, and Gusev just comes down, and he takes his pass. He'll walk in. He has all kinds of time, and Gamble can't see the shot. He drops to his knees, and it goes right upstairs over his shoulder. A good shot right underneath the bar, and it's a power play goal as Gusev gets his second of the game. He puts it right up underneath the bar on Troy Gamble, and so that gives him 10 on the season. Face off controlled by Houston. And we're back at even strength after the power play goal for Gusev. Puck shot into the Michigan zone. Dennis Smith goes back to play. And he'll move it up the right side. Smith threw it out at center and Hurlbutt is there. Things went far side. It'll go back down the ice. Fernandez lets it roll and Bradbury takes over. Cleared up the boards and out at center. Langenbrunner to Storm. Down the left side. Krupke. Right in the eye of the storm, knocked the puck away, and here's Zach Boyer left side. Scooped it down, they battle in behind the net, Storm and Krupke. Langenbrunner fished it out. Langenbrunner, base of the left circle. And he set left side, had it poked away by Maurice down at center. Dennis Smith in a foot race with Slavchenko gets there in the nick of time to clear it. Three minutes elapsed in the second, 2-0 Michigan. Zach Boyer across the line, sharp angle shot. Is off balance and wide of the net. Maurice. Clear to center for Igor Bashkatov. He'll dump it in, then he's tapped down by Langenbrunner, and whistle stops playing, a penalty, and we'll sort it out when we return. 16.48 to go in the second period. It's the K-Wings 2 and the Arrows no score. This is Saturday night on ice. Arrows down 2-0 with 16.48 to go in the second. Jamie Langenbrunner into the box for holding, and the Arrows with their fourth power play of the night. 0 for 4 on the man advantage. On that Gusev goal, Petrovichki and Peacock got the assists. And that Sergei Gusev goal. Puck is picked up by the arrows, and here comes Carl Valamont. He'll move it up and out of his own. Give it to Freer. Out at center. Cross ice pass for Lamb. It's dumped away by Gusev into the corner as Brian Curran flings it along for Neil Brady, but it's knocked down by Townsend. In there grappling with Derek Smith. It came behind the net, Freer, trying to center one. Arrows have it, Carl Valamont. Long wrist shot right on. I think Fernandez got a piece of it. And the Arrows trying to jump on it again, but it was poked out at center. And the Arrows are back. 120 to go in the power play. It is Carl Valamont. He'll try one ahead for Sylvain Turgeon. He's jumped in by. Fernandez, he'll roll it over to the boards and the arrows hold it in. Lamb, left point, moved down into the circle. Pass came over right side, Valamont, long shot blocked by Fernandez. And the K-Wings trying to get it out of there. Townsend dug it out, but Sergei Gusev is there. Wraps it along the boards, it'll go the length of the ice. Last night, the arrows were two for five on the power play. Tonight, they are 0 for three, this being their fourth power play. So they'd like to get the, the offense going a little bit on the power play, maybe. Pass came out at center ice for Igor Bashkatov, but that's knocked away, and the Arrows will try it again at center. Mark Lamb back to his own blue line. He directs for Mike Maurice, and he'll send it over to Jakes. Jakes charges up ice, give it to Lamb across the, uh, across the line. That is offsides, and play is whistled down. Tomorrow night after the game, spend three hours with the Carradine brothers. At 10, catch David as Kung Fu the legend continues. Then Keith is an ex-cop with an eye for payback in the payoff. The Carradines will rock your world tomorrow night on UPN 20. Troy Gamble facing 12 shots in the contest has stopped 10 of them. Both the goals have been off the stick of Sergei Gusev. And Robert Petrovichki has assisted on both those goals. Mike Hurlbutt turns in behind the net. And he'll move the rush from right to left. Pass came to Jake's near side. 12 to go on the power play, and the arrow's still hemmed in their own end. Igor Bashkatov gives it to Hurlbutt. And here comes Jake's. Jake's left side. Brings it across the line as he dumps it in. Out of the net, Manny Fernandez. He'll slow the puck jam along the boards. Arrows trying to get there, cannot. And Petrovichki will move it out at center. Donnelly turns it up for Shane Peacock. He lost the handle on it. Right side trying to move one out in front, and Maurice is there. He'll get it out at center. Puck is loose at center. And 
Maurice will bring it back. Baskatoff in a cross line. Long shot right on. And Fernandez makes the save. He'll hold on. 14-22 to go in the second. And the K-Wings lead it 2-0. Well, I'll tell you what. The Arrows, in our famous saying, they can't all be gems. The Arrows have had their struggles this year against some top-class teams. Who's saying is that, anyways? That's our famous executive producer. Senator Paul Senator Bikowski. Paul Bikowski. Yeah, they've had to have their trouble, and it's uh, against three teams. That they finally beat Fort Wayne on this uh, road trip, but just couldn't beat Orlando as Orlando took them uh, in, a, in a tight match. But I tell you what, you take those three teams out of the out of the circle, and, and the heroes are back in it. Off the draw, the K-Wings have got it. And they'll try to clear it. The arrows hold it in. Sean O'Brien down the right side trying to move one in. Yo was in there, jammed away by O'Brien, scooped it down in the corner, and the K-Wings are there. Gusev. Watched by Malgunas. Here come New Michigan out at center. That's tipped away by Freer. A loose puck jumped on by Peacock, but again, that is offsides. And again, the faceoff will come to center with six minutes gone in the second. 2 0 Michigan. You know what, Adam? What's this shaping up to be like right now? Maybe like last week's game? Oh, exactly. Except the only problem is the Arrows trail 2 0 instead of being tied 1 1 uh, going into the middle of the second period here but there's Sean O'Brien skates if you're enjoying the game on UPN 20 I tell you what you could see the wraps he's got around his ankles his skates are so old he has to do that just to keep some support around his ankles I think it's maybe time to get the kid a new pair of skates Adam oh my here's a giveaway Petrovsky shoots and Gamble got over with a nice save delayed penalty coming up for the arrows Mike Donnelly has shot his block extra attacker comes out for the K-Wings and it's jammed in there back to the line but Yo is finally there and we have now Connor coming up fighting with one of the K-Wings that was Petrovsky and everybody getting all locked up they battle some more and finally the linesmen get in there to separate it as the K-Wings lead it two to nothing. Well, the Earls aren't going to back down from anyone, I tell you, and uh, they're not going to back down tonight. They uh, definitely want to keep their respect, regardless of the situation for the postseason. And uh, right now, and it's it's no surprise to see Miles O'Connor in the middle of things there. Well, everybody cools off. And Dan O'Halloran, in our referee, will well. And out the penalties. Well, the original penalty is a hook. I don't know if he's going to call anything after that. And I, I'm not sure who it's on. I think it might have been on Miles O'Connor. That's more of a hold. But no matter which way you look at it, the Earls will find themselves in the box. And and Miles O'Connor trying to draw maybe a retaliation. But the linesmen get in there real quick. Nothing really comes about except the Miles O'Connor penalty. Or actually, you know what? It's a Mark Freer. I saw Miles O'Connor drag someone down. I figured that's going to for sure the penalty. But... Mark Freer gets a hook. You know, I didn't see him hook anybody. That's uh, it. Must have happened on earlier in the play because that's the kind of guy like, he is. It looked, it looked, yeah, he's sneaky about that. Yeah. But so anyways, the uh, Heralds will have to kill another penalty. 13:43 to go in the second period, and the K Wings, who just scored on the power play, which now makes it. 18 of the last 20 games the arrows have given up a power play goal now I'll have to try and kill this thing off This is the key goal in any hockey game because the third goal could either make it three nothing or if the arrows score it They're back in it 2 one here come the Michigan K-Wings left side Richards across the line back to the line it came to Mike Donnelly he's watched by Conroy down. He went Donnelly fights for it gave to Neil Brady back to Donnelly and Donnelly sets it back to the line Travis Richards at a left point Worked it down for Brady. Cuts it back. Here's Donnelly. Shoots. Went wide of the net. Caromed off the glass. Bounds into the corner for Lawrence. Lawrence shoveled it back to the line for Travis Richards. Richards moving down left side. Getting set on the power play. A minute 20 to go in the man advantage. Donnelly right side. Hooked it down for Neil Brady. He centered one. It hits Gates. Here's a shot that went just wide of the net. In fact, I'm not so sure it didn't graze the outside edge of the net. Finally hurled, but gathered one in. He couldn't clear it. Here's Lawrence with a big drive. And Campbell the same. Brady trying to push it down. Derek Smith, team captain for Michigan, looped it to Brady. Back to the line for Donnelly. Mike Donnelly, top of the slot. Sends one down. Shut it. Good. And Gamble got there. And there are the arrows to clear it right back down the ice. Mark Lamb. 49 seconds to go in the Freer minor. 12 and a half to go in the second. 2 nothing Michigan. The arrows look like they're backing a little bit on their uh, penalty kill there, Adam, and it's giving some pretty good shots to the Kalamazoo Wings. Jack Boyer across the line, chipped away by Valamont. Jim Storm taps Jakes to the board. 
Here come the K-Wings left side. Boyer trying to move one down for Storm. That's knocked away. And right back down the ice it goes. Brad Barry. Got to feed Gusev. Now it's rolled back over to Barry. We're eight minutes into the second period, and the K-Wings up two to nothing on the Houston Arrows. Idea from Wing Stadium in Kalamazoo. Jim Storm right side. Dropped it for Zach Boyer. Power play down to five seconds. Puck in the slot. Langan Bruner couldn't pull the trigger. And the Arrows will shoot it right back down the ice. That will do it for the penalty. Teams are at five assignments. Fear back out of the box. Fernandez flings it out of harm's way to center. It'll go back down into the arrow end. Gamble knocked it away. And here is Sylvain Turgeon. Lead pass Freer. That's chipped away by Smith. Turgeon bumped by Derek Smith. And here come the K-Wings. Kevin Beam. Pass ahead to the left side. And out at center ice, it is Patrick Cote. Brought it in left wing. He's tied up by Valamont. Beam in behind the net, pushed by Miles O'Connor. Puck rolled near side as Smith and Townsend go at it. That's Derek Smith. Meehan picks up a loose puck, cutting in behind the net. Wrap around, he scores! How did he get that one? That is pure hard work from Kevin Meehan. And it's now 3-0 Michigan. And Troy Gamble is arguing, and I don't know if he has a... He does have a leg to stand on, maybe, as Cote was right on the doorstep. He was in the crease. Now, the only thing that would go against that is if uh, O'Brien shoved Cote in the crease. Right now, it looks like they're going to call it a goal, but if you watch on UPN 20 where Cote is in the crease, he is standing right in the crease, and I tell you what, that's a perfect interference penalty. The only way it isn't is if O'Brien pushed him in the crease, and it doesn't really... Looked like he did. It looked like it looked like to me that uh, Cote tried to just get in front of Gamble, and heck, his feet are on the goal line with Gamble's. I don't know about that, Adam. What do you think? Yeah, that's a hard call. We don't really get a good look at it as far as Sean O'Brien. Clearly, O'Brien is tying up Patrick Cote, but you got to ask yourself, well, that's his job, though. Yeah, right. And and the thing is, I guess it's not a goal if he put if he. Uh, if O'Brien pushes Cote in the crease, but I really didn't see uh, necessarily a cross check or anything to push O'Brien into that crease. It looked like he was just happy to go there. And well, the K Wings have a three nothing lead. Here's Slavchenko with a shot that's chipped away. Maybe when we come back from break, we'll ask Rob Dobson get his thoughts on that. Being another goalie, I'm surrounded by goalies tonight. Buck is picked up by the I K Wings. Feel sorry for you, Adam. <laughs> Here come the K Wings. Dumped in by Petrovicki. It'll bounce out in front. It came out there. Baskatov trying to move it out. It came to center with ten and a half to go in the second. Three nothing Michigan. Maurice watched by Petrovicki. Center run. That's tipped away. And Shane Peacock will turn and flip it out at center ice. Lead pass. Knocked away. Hurl butt. And then he fired it into his own end. And Krupke's there to turn and rip it right back down to center ice. Travis Richards to Sergei Gusev. Bounced away, and here comes Maurice the other way for Houston. Maurice across the line had it tipped away, and here comes Derek Smith. He's got two guys to beat. Dodge to Jake's hip check. Oh boy. And now the arrows. A lead pass. Turgeon's right in. Shoots. Save made by Fernandez. Credit though, Travis Richards getting back because if he doesn't get back at the two on nobody was Lachenko and Turgeon. Richards got back and made a nice play. Falamon give it to Bashkatov. And Jake's is in his own end. And then he'll fire one into the bench, and we'll take a timeout. 9.47 to go in the second period. 3 nothing. Michigan. We'll be right back. Nothing, Michigan, and quickly let's go down to Rob Dobson. Dobber, what was your thought on that third goal? Well, Adam, I can't really see from here, but what everyone has said is Cote got pushed in by our own defenseman. The referee said he was definitely in the crease, but unfortunately, uh, I think he still has to make an attempt to get out, and he didn't. But yeah. it was a, a you know, it's a big goal because we made, killed off a good penalty to get back into it, got some momentum, and then to get an unfortunate one like that. But there's a lot of time left in this period to come back. Yeah, you made a good point there, Dauber. Thanks. And that means that Cote has to make an effort to get out of there, and it didn't look like that he did. Puck is back into the arrow end, and there's Gamble to slow in behind the net, rolled near side, and Sylvain Turgeon popped it out at center. 9.27 to go in the second period, 3-0 Michigan. Sylvain Turgeon wrapped the puck ahead for Lamb. Dug out by the K-Wings, and Zach Boyer flings it in. Here's Jakes. He'll roll one to the near side out of the reach of Alamont, and Turgeon will go back for it. Jammed it along the boards. It came back to the line. Bradbury pumped it down. Jim Storm looks in front. Storm shakes off a check, trying to cut in there. He's worked on by Jakes. Zach Boyer to Jamie Langenbrunner. Langenbrunner 
Trying to center one. That's knocked away by Valamont. Langenbruder got it back. Cuts right in on goal. Shoots. Gamble save. Rebound. Gamble save. And there are the arrows to pick up the rebound. So Gamble, two point blank stops. Conroy across the line. Dumped it into the corner. Lamb in there trying to fish it out of traffic. But it's picked up by Brian Curran and he'll motor in behind his net with 8.37 to go in the second period. 3 0. The K Wings lead it. Here is Troy Gamble. Slows the puck for Miles O'Connor, and he'll move it out at center ice. O'Connor left side, dumped the puck into the K-wing zone, out of the net for Nandez. Richards goes back. Travis Richards, he'll push one ahead out at center, and it's Kevin Meehan who dumped it in. Yo after it, but Neil Brady was the first one there. He centered it. It came back to the line, and the arrows clear it. Here comes Mark Freer. Three on one, but Cote gets back. Freer shoots, stopped by Fernandez, and then Dennis Smith. More like Skeets Nehemiah jumping over his teammate Travis Richards and then nearly went headfirst into the boards. Boy, that'll put a point, that'll put about a 9.5 on the Richter scale. Well, he used his teammate as a trampoline, but in the effort of making a good defensive play, it was a three on one. And Freer makes a good decision, he shoots it, and it'll go off the glove of Fernandez. And over the top he goes as he th dumps the puck into the corner and goes with it. And Smith makes a diving save of his own. So they'll bring the face off to the right side of Emmanuel Fernandez. You know, Dennis Smith, earlier in the season in Houston, you might remember, got tied up with one of the arrows. He was checked from behind and put hit first in the boards and did not return to the game. But it was not a severe hit. But he left the game. It was, I think, if I remember, it was Di Pietro he ran into. Paul Di Pietro, he ran into him. And, it wasn't a hit where he tried to take him to the boards. They just kind of collided with their heads down. And now we've got a puck out at center ice. Play whistled down, and we take time out. 7.46 to go in the second period. 3 nothing. Michigan. We'll be right back. Fans, mark your calendars. The second annual Houston Arrows Hockey Camp is coming to an aerodrome near you this summer. Camps will run for one week each, July 15th through the 19th at the Willowbrook Aerodrome and the 22nd through the 26th at the Sugarland Aerodrome. Rob Dobson and Graham Townsend will be the instructors. For more information, give the Arrows a call at 621-2842. And I think we'll get a little more scoop on that in the second intermission when Graham Townsend is Mike Greenlay's guest in our studio. I like the sound of that. As Fernandez makes a save and he'll hold on 740 to go in the second period and the K-Wings lead it three to nothing. Well, yeah, you mentioned earlier and, and the point still remains that Fernandez hasn't really had to come up with a lot of spectacular saves. And when a team plays that kind of defensive style that the K-Wings are playing, it allows their goaltender just to take the angle. And in a rink like this where there aren't very many angles anyways, I tell you what, it makes a goalie's job that much easier. Face off left side of Fernandez. Freer wins the draw back to Miles O'Connor. That's down right side. Right in. Shoot. Stop by Fernandez. Rebound. It came back to the line for Sean O'Brien. And it's taken away. And the K-Wings chase it down. Donnelly smoking down the right side. Cuts in. Lost the puck, but he made a good effort anyway. Gusev is back at center. Here is Shane Peacock the other way. Three on one. Well, Donnelly's in a loaded gamble. Great save. Rebound. Score. Hits the goal, and it's 4 nothing Michigan. Petrovitsky's third point of the game. He had two assists on the first two goals of the game, and now he adds a goal to that uh, couple points as it's a good save by Gamble. The puck just lands behind him as they jam away at it, and nothing but the open net for Petrovitsky as he jams it home. Uh, not much anyone could do as it bounces behind Gamble. Gamble made a good save on the original shot, and as they jammed away at it, he really didn't have a chance on any of the rebounds. He does stop one of the rebounds, but not both of them as it goes to 4 0. The Wings lead it. Mashkatov, Maurice, Levchenko, Krumpke, and Earl, but now the five some out there, and the arrows have dug themselves into a hole, trailing 4 0. 25th goal of the year for Petrovichki. K-Wings have it. They'll move it up ice. Seven minutes to go. In the second period, Maurice hustles back to play a puck in his own end. Watched by Mark Lawrence. And here is Bashkatov. He'll motor around at center. Lead pass Levchenko is turned around. Lawrence in there to fight for it with Maurice. It's jammed away. Maurice cuts it in there. And out of the net. It is Manny Fernandez. Here's Derek Smith. 
for Michigan. He'll turn out at center ice. With the puck in, Brady pursues, and the arrows back to play. Mike Maurice, left side, dumped the puck into the Michigan zone. Dennis Smith knocked it down, circles back in his own end. Fired ahead, and here come the K-Wings out at center. Jamie Langenbrun, left side, got it into the zone. Campbell stopped it, and Carl Valamont will ride into town and play it. Fired it off the glass. It'll go down the ice, and Dennis Smith is there. He's pursued by Malgunas. He'll clear it out at center ice. Jakes, dump the puck in. Fernandez will slow behind the net, and Sergei Gusev takes over. Now Gunas running into Fernandez a little bit behind the play as he got tied up with him. Now a battle for the puck along the boards. Conroy in there fighting for it. Lamb trying to loosen it up along the boards. Langenbrunner was there, and it's pushed away by Kevin Malgunas as he pursues. Malgunas, the Prince George, British Columbia native, trying to take it out, cannot do it. Clear to the line, not out. Fernandez makes a big save in front as he outstretched that right pad through traffic. That looked like the Southwest Freeway right in front of him. Here come the K-Wings the other way. Jim Storm cutting right in, shoots. That's blocked by Lamb and cleared out at center ice. 5.18 to go, 4 nothing. K-Wings lead it. Michigan, Barry across the line. And that is offsides and play is whistled down. Let's take a timeout. It's 4 nothing. The K-Wings lead it. This is Saturday Night on Ice. Taking a look at tonight's Pizza Hut save comparisons, they're sponsored by Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut delivers Troy Gamble, has faced 22 shots and stopped 18 of them thus far tonight. And for the Michigan K-Wings, Emmanuel Fernandez has faced 21 shots. And if you multiply your body weight times zero, that's exactly how many goals he's let in. He stopped the ball at 21. Don't even say it, Greener. I know you always say, multiply your weight times zero. We still come up with a number. How do you do that? That's your math, though. I've seen your math. You, you could find a way to do that. This has been a long road trip for you <laughs> and me. Here come the K-Wings. It's out at center ice. And Cote couldn't come up with it. It went down into the air and O'Connor slams one near side. Yo got it back to the line and Donnelly is there. Mike Donnelly shoots it back to the line. Gusev turns for Kevin Meehan. And Meehan will regroup at his own blue line as we're down to 4.35 to go in the second period. 4-0 K-Wings. Arrows pick up a loose puck. Here comes Yo and across the line for Freer. Trying to redirect when it was blocked and pushed away by Meehan. He was able to place that out at center. Miles O'Connor. Puck, he's got a corral and shovel one ahead. It bounced into the zone, but K-Wings are back. K-Wings with a puck. Gusev in across the line. Whoop. Made a dipsy doodle too much. And that is going to be an offsides call on the Michigan K-Wings. And uh, the Arrows trying to dig down and find a way to get back into this thing. Miles O'Connor just to talk, speaking about birthdays, we said Troy Gambles is tomorrow, he's 29. Miles O'Connor just turned 29 on the 2nd of April. And so did Gord Krupke, he turned 27 on the 2nd of April. A couple, yeah. couple of birthday boys last week. Yeah. A lot of birthdays. Miles O'Connor, we talked about last week, not only getting the birthday this week, but his college team, University of Michigan, winning the NCAA Hockey's Final Four. Face off controlled in the arrow end by Shane Peacock. He's tapped to the wall by Mike Maurice. Battle for the puck came down, and Hurlbutt's there for Houston. Scooped it for Turgeon, but it's out of his reach, and Dennis Smith is there. He'll crank one into the Houston end. Goes fireside for Krupke. Trying to work one down for Hurl, but it's definitely been the game for Robert Petrovicki. Here's a delayed penalty coming up to Derek Smith as he checked Hurl button. He's going to get boarding. And the Euros down by four at 4 nothing. A chance on the power play. Well, if you recall, last Wednesday in Orlando, they were down four, came back by three goals, just didn't have well, enough to get it done. But I tell you what, there's a good test of that of Hurlbutt's. Uh, I don't know. I remember earlier on this year when he, the first game he played for Houston, that terrible accident he was involved in, and he gets hit from behind. I, I can't say that he enjoys getting hit from behind. Well, give me a player. Of that. Yeah, <laughs> any player that does. Yeah, but especially him, I tell you. And he gets a boarding penalty. We'll go to Derek Smith. So the arrows with a chance on the power play which has been quite anemic tonight. They have not scored on it. They are 0 for 4 on the man advantage. This is chance number five. And it'll be Lamb, Conroy, Malgunas with a chance on the power play. Valamont and Jake's defensively. 
Carl Valamont hustles in behind that attack by Mark Lawrence. Interesting story about Lawrence we can touch upon a little bit later as the puck goes out of play. We can do it now. Mark Lawrence, who's out there, talk about the luck that he has had. Mark Lawrence, here's a guy I want to take to Vegas. Well, yeah, I understand. A little bird told me that he, he won a large, large sum of money playing Caribbean poker uh, or before a Vegas game uh, last year. And I heard upwards of 40 grand, and that's, that's a big chunk of change. 40 grand. How much of it, I wonder how much of it he dispersed amongst his teammates. Oh. <laughs> Multiply your body weight times zero. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Face off at center ice, and it's controlled by the K-Wings. Fernandez comes out, flings it along the board that's back out at center. Neil Brady, right side, shoots it into the arrow end, and here is Steve Jakes, worked into the boards by Lawrence. And Mark Lamb will fire it ahead. Mile, or make that Al Conroy. Scooped it ahead into the Michigan zone. Brad Berry is back, tapped to the wall by Malgunas, dug out by Conroy. Got it back to the line. Here's Valamont, winds, fakes the shot. That's his range. You know, Carl Valamont scored the goal last week here from center ice. That's well within his three point shooting range. Lock is in the Michigan zone. Jake's pinching. He was tied up by Jim Storm. K Wings can't clear it. Malgunas, nice play. Feeds Conroy, shoots. Deflected just wide. That play was all turned by uh, Kevin Malgunas. Started off with a nice hit, then a play to knock the puck down, then he centered it. K-Wings have it, and right now the arrow's in the middle of a line change, and the K-Wings just standing there, and they don't need to do anything. They'll just shoot it back down the ice. Arrow's in a very slow line change, and about seven, eight seconds ticked off the clock. 43 seconds are now left in the arrow power play. Yo brings it in down the left side. Yo fighting for it with Travis Richards from Michigan. Pounds and tries to pursue it. Chopped away. Yo trying to fish it out of skates. Yo had it, but he had his stick lifted. Yo back to the line. O'Connor. Here's the one time shot by Hero, but right on. Fake save there, and it's turned away by Langenbrunner and cleared out at center. Hero's definitely doing a little bit better on this power play. They've had a couple good opportunities out. Two minutes to go in the second. 4 0 Michigan. 15 seconds to go in the power play. It is Miles O'Connor. Gets it over to Hurlbutt. Hurlbutt, long shot, deflected just wide. Bashkatov trying to gather it in. Bashkatov turning left side. Oh, gave the puck away, though. And the K-Wings clear it. And here comes Zach Boyer. Gives to Langenbrunner. Langenbrunner watched by O'Connor. They go to the boards. It was centered, but Jim Storm takes over. Flings it back to the line. Here's the shot by Kern. That was smacked wide of the net. And it's tipped away. Zach Boyer. Base of the circle in his own end. Centered one. It came to the near side for Jim Storm. Storm centered. Here's Langenbrunner. Shoots! Creek the bullet just wide. And Bashkatov is there. And with a minute 13 left, he'll clear it down the ice. A shot into arrow territory. Gamble makes the save. And Sylvain Turgeon is there. A minute to go. Drills one in and a left pad save made by Fernandez. Brian Curran. Lobbed it out at center. Cote, but Kevin Meehan. He had it tipped away by Slivchenko. And he'll move it down along the boards. Lock jammed in front. Here's a chance. Cote. And he'll move it up and out of it in. Patrick Cote at center ice. Fired it into the arrow end. That'll come squarely to Gamble. And Sean O'Brien is back. Cleared along the boards. And it's out at center. Half a minute to go in the second period. And a whistle. And the puck knocked out. And a reminder that Houston Arrows hockey is sponsored in part by Bud Ice. They are proud sponsors of IHL hockey and, of course, proud sponsors of your Houston Arrows. Enjoy a nice cold Bud Ice today. I know in about 20 minutes and 27 seconds, I will be enjoying a nice cold Bud Ice. And I'm sure my good friends Paul Bykowski and Top Shelf Timmy Sinclair will be enjoying one as well. No doubt. Four nothing K Wings. It is Dennis Smith who ripped one in. To the arrow end, Fireside Conroy trying to bat it down. Lamb is there, and he'll move it out at center for Freer. Gives to Sean O'Brien across the line. O'Brien cutting in. Fired it to an open wing, and the K-Wings turn it in transition. They're out at center. Smith into Houston territory with five seconds left. Krupke is there, and he'll shoot one along the boards. Back to the line. Brady held it in. Long shot is blocked, and that is the end of the second period. Arrows were down one to nothing after one, but three unanswered goals in the second period again by the K-Wings, and they take a four-nothing lead 
into the intermission. And when we return, Mike Greenlay will chat with Graham Townsend. Four nothing, the K-Wings lead it. This is Saturday Night on Ice. Welcome back to Wing Stadium, everybody. Adam Gordon with you is the Arrows. Trailing in this one by a score of four to nothing. Sergei Gusev, the difference in this one with a couple of goals, including one on the power play. Robert Petrovichki having an outstanding game as well. He's got a goal and two assists. Toy Gamble, not as good an effort as perhaps we have seen in the past. And I guess with all the noise, you could say my ship has come in, but the arrows, hopefully theirs will come in in the third period, trailing by a score of four to nothing. Last night, as you know, the arrows lost a 3-2 in a shootout. It was a very disheartening loss because in combination of that, by losing, Atlanta won by a score of seven to four, and the Arrows' uh, playoff hopes are done now, and a lot of pride on the line. And I want to remind everybody to get set for the Arrows' final games. They will play the Phoenix Roadrunners on Wednesday, and then on Sunday, the Fan Appreciation Day. The Arrows taking on the Detroit Vipers. Last night, a big game for Houston Arrow Graham Townsend. He had a couple of power play goals, and he is standing by with Mike Greenlight. Greener. Thank you, Adam. I, as you said, I'm here with Graham Townsend with those two power play goals. He now leads the Arrows with 10 power play goals on the year. And Graham, last year you had 19 goals, 21 assists, or 40 points. This year you've, uh, you know, you've gone above that uh, goal mark at 21. And I know it's been a little disappointing as a team for the season. But does it take the edge off knowing that uh, you've reached some of your own goals? Well, to be honest with you, yeah, that that uh, was one of my goals to improve on my um, my production from last season. So. Uh, it, it takes a little bit of the sting out of it, but uh, nothing, nothing beats making the playoffs and, um, and making a run for a championship. And uh, that's what uh, I'm dedicated to doing. And, and I don't think I'll uh, be happy until it happens. So far this game, uh, compared to the last time you guys were in this building where you were able to win 2-1 in, in a shootout, how, what's, what's the difference in that game from, from this game? Because tonight uh, you guys uh, don't, haven't gotten on the board and uh, you know, obviously having a little trouble defensively. I think um, we've we've gone away from our system. Our system was to get the puck in deep on their defensemen. Being in a small rank, uh, you're able to create more turnovers if you get the puck in deep, and we're not really doing that. We're not dumping the puck when we get a chance to, and uh, I think uh, we need to get back to playing our system. It works. We've proven it works, and uh, if, when everyone's on the same page, it's great to watch. On a, on a lighter note, I understand that uh, uh, you're going to be, along with Rob Dobson, uh, the instructors of the Houston Arrows Hockey Schools this, uh, this summer. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Well, we started it last year. Um, we, we figured we wanted to tr try and get something going in Houston in terms of uh, improving the level of youth hockey. And um, we started the camp last year, and we're doing it again this year for two weeks. Um, the, uh, it's going to be the, um, I believe the 15th to the 19th of uh, July, and then the following week at, the, at uh, Sugarland. And uh, we're hoping that uh, we get a good turnout this year. And I also understand that you're doing a little bit of a roller hockey uh, instructing as well. That's in June sometime. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that as well? Yeah, well, uh, I started that last year as well. Um, I'm down at the Slapshot Street and Roller Hockey Center. I have a uh, two-week um, roller hockey camp. First week starting June 10th um, for five days, and then uh, it's their full-day camps. Uh, the second week is um, June 17th. So, uh, again, uh, I'm hoping that uh, things work out well, and I hope the kids can come down and have some fun. Now, in the final three games uh, after tonight, uh, obviously the games don't mean anything as far as the, the standings are concerned, but talk a little bit about the character on this team. I understand uh, just from seeing the guys and seeing the effort they're putting out that there's a lot of heart and character on this hockey team. Well, you know, it's something I, uh, I try to stress to, to, to kids and to my son even, um, that no matter how dismal things may look, you need to set goals for yourself. You need to find some type of goal to set. And uh, as I was browsing through the stat sheet today, I noticed that Dave Tippett, uh, is one game below 500 in his uh, head coaching career so far, and I think it'd be nice for us to go out on a on a winning note for him, so he could pl have his record above 500, and that's a goal that we've set. And you know, this game's not over yet; we still have a chance to uh, improve on that tonight. So that that's one of our goals, and that's that's a character thing, a pride thing, and that uh, that's something we need to uh, to uh, take care of the, over the last three and three and a half games. All right, Graham, thank you very much for your time, and uh, I wish you the best of luck in this game and the rest of the season. Thank you, Mike. All right, that was Graham Townsend for the Houston Arrows, and we'll be back to Wing Stadium right after this. It's 4-0. The Michigan K-Wings are leading the Houston Arrows. A couple of power play goals, a couple of even strength goals, and it's been a terrific effort tonight by the Michigan K-Wings. And, you know, don't kid yourself. I think Graham Townsend, it wasn't the effort that he was talking about as much as just going away from the system. The Arrows showing a lot of heart tonight, and hopefully they can get one there in the third period and make it uh, an interesting uh, game down the stretch. 
Take a look at the scoring summary throughout the hockey game. It started back in the first period when Sergei Gusev got his ninth of the year at 7:31. It was uh, Brian Kern and Robert Petrovichki getting the assist, and the K-Wings led it one to nothing. Then in the second period, Gusev scored on the power play, his second of the night, tenth of the year at 2:12. Petrovichki and Shane Peacock getting the assist, and the K-Wings were off to the races. They would make it three to nothing. Kevin Meehan, a wraparound goal at 8:58 from Smith and from Cote, who was uh, in the crease, they were uh, the arrows were pleading their case, but to no avail. It was counted as a goal, and it was three nothing, four nothing. Petrovichki getting the goal at 12:45. It would be Mike Donnelly and Shane Peacock picking up his assist. It would be Shane Peacock's second assist of the night. So Peacock playing a strong game defensively. He's got two assists. Sergey Gusev having a strong game from the blue line. He's got two goals, and uh, the K Wings lead it by a score of four to nothing. And uh, the arrows, as we said, they came into this game without a win in their last two. They lost in Orlando. And then, of course, the 3-2 uh, shootout loss to the Indianapolis Ice last night. A lot of back injuries are a big problem for hockey players, and that is our topic tonight as we take time out for good health. It's a 4-0 K-Wing lead, and we are just about ready to start the third period, and quickly we will look at second period stats brought to you by Whataburger. Hey, what you waiting for? Second period stats, shots on goal, 12-11 in favor of Michigan. The Arrows, 1 for, or 0 for 2 on the power play. The K-Wings, 1 for 2 on the power play. Both teams had four minutes of penalties. So the team's getting ready for the start of period number three. We'll bring that to you right after this. It's 4-0 Michigan. This is Saturday Night on Ice. K-Wings lead it by a score of 4-0 starting the third period. Wing Stadium holds a little over 4,000 and a pretty good crowd on hand this evening and having a very good time. And that's really what this building is all about. One of the old-time buildings. It's not big. It doesn't have its luxury boxes. And you know what? They don't need it. They have atmosphere, Adam. Oh, absolutely they do. They do, and they know their hockey. They're very smart fans and very good fans and they love their K-Wings and I'll tell you it's going to be a battle next year with Grand Rapids coming into the IHL it'll be the battle of Michigan Ugh. well and you got Detroit true oh boy here's Neil Brady to start things off he'll move it down the left side for Derek Smith trying to center one we start the third period at five aside and there is Smith given a rough ride by Krupke and they're going to call a penalty on the arrows and well, yeah. I don't know why they would be calling Krupke on this. I think maybe Krupke got in a little behind him, uh, and he's going to get a boarding call. And uh, right now, Graham Townsend asked the referee O'Halloran, well, why, why do you call him that for? Well, the one against Mike Hurlbutt was almost identical down at the other end in the second period as Krupke gives him yeah. a good ride in the boards. That, that's a good call. Uh, kind of a dangerous play. You know, Krupke's not a dirty player, but just taking his man out, and he doesn't believe it, but he gets a two-minute boarding call, and so the K-Wings who will go on the power play right now will take another shot at it. No, you made a good analogy. That was actually very similar to the Mike Hurlbutt play where he got butted from behind. It's funny because when uh, when Townsend asked O'Halloran, O'Halloran, all he did is point down to the other end to where that happened, and, and Townsend just shook his head and said, yeah, you're right, it's the same thing. So, good call. Face off to the right side of Troy Gamble. And the K-Wings on the power play. A shot right on, stop, rebound, score! Patrick Cote! And it took them all of four seconds to score on the power play. It is 5 0 Michigan. I tell you what, Cote was in the crease when the K Wings scored their third goal. This time he's on the top of it, and this time he gets the goal as he picks up a rebound in front. Peacock will just send one towards the net. It goes off of Gamble, and Cote's a big man. He's got that long reach. He reaches around Gamble and deposits it into the net. It's a 5-0 game, and it's also a power play goal. So Patrick Cote with a goal and an assist tonight. He's played a strong game. He's kind of, the thing I liked about his game tonight as compared to the last game was, last game I think he was trying his hooligans with some of the guys and it wasn't working. Tonight he's playing just gritty hockey. And it's working. He's back in the arrow end. 5-0 Michigan. Shots are even at 23 apiece. Here's Sylvain Turgeon at center. Brings it across the line. Looking for Slivchenko. That's knocked away. And the K-Wings will move it up the boards to the line. Not out. Turgeon held it in. And the K-Wings turn it around. 
Brad Berry into Smith. Eric Smith scooped it out at center. Carl Valamont is there, and Turgeon brings it across the line. Pope checked away. And there's Neil Brady. Ahead to Cote. Cote moving in. Brady shooting. Fired that short side. Just missed. Puck came out in front. Brady firing after that puck. It was jammed back to the line. Curran, he fanned on the shot. And Jakes will move it away. Mike Maurice on the right side. Dumped the puck into the K-wing zone. It came to Fernandez. And there's Dennis Smith. Out at center for Kevin Meehan. He's got a goal in the game. Meehan dumped the puck into the arrow line. Gamble slows. And Miles O'Connor is there. Jammed at near side. Valgunas. That's flipped the hand and back out at center. Smith. More check by Malgunas. Give it to Brian Curran. And here come the K-Wings. Zach Boyer to Kevin Meehan. Dropped it back. Boyer has got a lane. He'll shoot and miss it short side. Puck is in the arrow line. Here's Sean O'Brien. O'Brien flushed out by Meehan. He'll move it ahead for O'Connor. Two minutes gone in the third. And the K-Wings have scored another goal to start it off in the final frame. And they lead it five to nothing. Sean O'Brien into the Michigan zone. Fernandez slows it. And Sergey Gusev will clear it out at center. Here comes Peacock right side. Peacock moving in. Dropping it back. Petrovitsky right to the goal. Ripperin! Did it go in? He thinks it did. But Gamble held it. Petrovitsky must have had Cool in the gang playing in his ears to celebration, but it's all for naught as Troy Gamble says enough is enough. He makes a spectacular save on the goal line. Well, Gamble gets hooked in here as he goes down too early, but he recovers, and that's a part of goaltending is the recovery. Uh -oh. It goes off the post, and Petrovitsky actually thought it went off the post and went in. Gamble sc scrambles over to the other side of the net. It goes off the post and underneath his blocker. And a good save there, otherwise it would have been 6-0. Petrovitsky holding his arms in the air saying, what do I have to do? Well, I'll tell you what, when Petrovitsky found out that goal didn't go in, Petrovitsky became petrified, and that keeps it at 5-0. And the puck is out at center. Travis Richards, and we've got a whistle and another penalty. And going to the box will be Shane Peacock, and the arrows will go on the power play. Well, the arrows have to stop the bleeding here, and here's a perfect time to do it. On the power play, like I said last night, they were two for five and moved the puck around pretty well. Tonight, they haven't get, uh, got enough shots on goal and any second chances after the first shot. So they need to get in there and get their nose dirty a little bit. I thought bit. you made a good point with Graham Townsend and saying this game was somewhat analogous to the game last time, except that the point was that <laughs> the score. Well, know? yeah, and, and, and he, he put it good. He said, we're just not playing the system. And it's funny, I was talking to uh, Carl Valamont last night and he said, you know, there's too many games where the guys aren't trusting the system, and if you don't trust the system, then everybody's doing their own thing. It's a puck that's in the arrow end, and they'll start the power play. Mark Lamb fires one out to the left side for Hurlbutt. He'll bring it across the line, and down goes Dennis Smith. He'll crank one along the boards. Townsend trying to knock it down. Gives defer. He's belted hard by Dennis Smith. Battle for the puck. Langenbrunner and Townsend are in there. Puck came back to the line, and here is Lamb. Fires it down. Came to the right side for Freer. Now to Slivchenko. Slivchenko base to the right circle. Arrows trying it on their sixth power play here. They've yet to score on the man advantage. Uh, Townsend in there battling away at it. Townsend digs it out. Base to the right circle. Trying to pop one back to the line, but it got by Lamb. And it'll sizzle all the way back into the arrowhead. 110 to go on the power play. Lamb. Shake and bake at center. In across the line around Brady. Lamb moves it in, but... Neil Brady makes a good play there as he forces Lamb to make one extra move and the arrows are offsides. Well, the Houston Rockets back in action tomorrow night at 7 o'clock right here on UPN 20 as they take on the Denver Nuggets from McNichols Arena. And the Houston Astros will be at Riverfront Stadium taking on the Cincinnati Reds starting April 11th, 6.30 p.m. You can catch the Astros and the Rockets right here on your home, UPN 20. Face-off controlled by the arrows. Maurice trying to move it down, and we've got a whistle. And is that a hand pass? I think they'll move the face-off out at center. A minute one to go in the arrow power play. Right now on the ice, you have uh, Mike Yo, Maurice, and Conroy, three hard-working players who are going to try and grind it out down in there and try and get some shots on goal. The Euros, as I said, aren't getting a lot of second opportunities, and that's what they're going to need right now to score in our Fernandez. Conroy with 11 points in his last 
13 games coming into tonight's contest, and he, along with his teammates, have been blanked. It is Jake's behind the net, and Conroy brings it up. Al Conroy through the neutral zone. Moves it left side. O'Connor dumped it in. After it, Kusev, rough ride, pushed to the boards, back to the line, Jakes. Jakes had trouble holding it in. He's tapped to the wall by Derek Smith. They battle for it, and it's Conroy that will turn it around, but instead the K-Wings are there to shoot it right back down the ice. Under half a minute to go. In the penalty to Shane Peacock, arrows on the power play. Maurice across the blue line. Maurice trying to move it down around Travis Richards. Pass game, Malgunas cuts in. Center one, it was chipped away. Yo couldn't get there. Now O'Connor a chance, but had trouble with the puck. Malgunas, base of the left circle. Quick turn to the board by Richards. And he'll move it up and out at center ice. In fact, it'll go all the way down the ice, and Jakes will hustle back. Campbell will slow, and Jakes will turn it around. Here is Sylvain Turgeon, and he turned the puck over. Cote shooting! A right pad save made by Campbell as the teams are five aside. Cote is having a heck of a hockey game. Here come the arrows. Malgunas off his skates, and it's turned away by Brad Berry. Up ice they come. The K-Wings have it. It's turned down by Mark Lawrence into the arrow end. Cote, first one there. Knocked the puck away. Igor Bashkatov's got it. We've got a delayed penalty coming up to Cote. And then he gives O'Brien a shove. And are they going to go? They went in the first, but they won't go here. Timeout on the ice. Five minutes gone in the third. 5 nothing K-Wings. This is Saturday Night on Ice. You can bring a group of 20 or more friends to an Arrows hockey game. You receive a discount on tickets, a welcome at the game, merchandise discounts, and a chance to win great prizes twice a year in the group sweepstakes. You can also bring a group of 42 people to a game on the Aero bus. For more information, call 627-AERO. You can join the Aero Force. It's the American way. And there's plenty of time. Two games remaining, as we mentioned, Phoenix on Wednesday. And then on Sunday, it's the Detroit Vipers and the Arrows who are going to be on the power play greener are going to take another chance as Dave Tippett pulling out the stops here with a stick measurement. Well, this obviously, if they get this call, we'll have a five on three. Petrovitsky's not even going to wait and see. He, he jumped right in the box. He knows it's illegal. Oh, I've never seen that. At least you wait. <laughs> well, I think you could slide a silver dollar under there. Oh, yeah. Well. <laughs> he didn't, I've never seen that. A player usually waits and waits and just with bated breath. But Petrovic says, hey, get that door open. Let me just get comfortable. Well, the European players generally <laughs> like that curvature of the stick. and uh, It really helps with their stick handling and shooting ability. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe Petrovic doesn't have a legal stick. He'll have to borrow one. So the arrows go five on three now. A smart call by Dave Tippett, who uh, had the penalty on Kote already and then went to Petrovic for the illegal stick and so the arrows have a chance to jump back in this game tell you what one goal would be great but two on this five on three would just maybe turn things around the, the way the arrows need it right now off the face off arrows have it five on three for a full two minutes mark lab pass intercepted by mike donnelly and it's shoveled right back down the ice it is hurl but that will play it in behind the net Pearl Butt will skate away with it. Pass to the left side, Lamb. He'll dump the puck in. Counts in pursuit, but the arrows are offside. I want to quickly go down to uh, Rob Dobson. Dobber, my question for you is, on a stick measurement like that, who makes the call, the players or the coaches? Well, I think both. Uh, it's up to Dave to give the okay to go and do it, but I think players look throughout the hockey game and in warm-up to see who has the most obvious illegal stick, and in that case, I guess it was real obvious going right to the bench, but it's a good call. You know, anything can happen, and there's a lot of time left here in the period we get a couple goals are right back in it okay thank you off the face off arrows have it here's Al Conroy right side and across the line sends one back top of the slot for Lamb Lamb getting set on the five on three touchdown worked it to Conroy Conroy to Hurlbut line shoots great save by Fernandez Hurlbut again with a minute 22 on the two man advantage Lamb to Hurlbut great pass Conroy shoots nice save by Fernandez and he'll hold on I'll tell you what, Fernandez looks like a roadside scholar here. He is reading the arrow plays here beautifully and getting over post to post. Well, that's where a lot of his strength lies in his lateral movement. And in that butterfly style of his, he can get across nice and low and cover the low part of the net. That's where you have to maybe chip that puck up a little higher, take a little bit off the shot, but get it up a little higher. And the pass comes across, and Hurlbutt will just blast it. A good hard shot, but... Reading the play is Fernandez. If Perobot takes a little bit off the shot and puts it upstairs a little higher, he might have himself a goal. And then right 
back the other way. Lamb will feed it across, hurl butt over across the other side, and another save by Fernandez as Conroy blasts one and just can't get that puck in low on Fernandez. You're going to have to start going upstairs. Face off, controlled by the wings. Knocked off. Curran fell on top of the puck. Conroy in there trying to poke it loose. He's got Brady draped all over him, and the puck frozen. Play whistle down. We're six minutes into the third. Five nothing Michigan. A minute ten remaining in both penalties. Patrick Cote and Robert Petrovichki. Well, Fernandez this year has three shutouts already, and I know it's early in this third period. 14:09 remaining, and the Arrows still have a five on three. But if he can kill off this five on three, it'll give him that much momentum to maybe roll to his fourth shutout of the season. Face off to the right side of goaltender Manny Fernandez. And Al Conroy getting ready to take this face off against Neil Brady. Minute 10 to go in the two man advantage. Arrows win the draw. Here's Lamb at a left point getting set top of the slot. Lamb takes the shot, jammed it to Conroy. Conroy moving in, waiting. Center. Oh, pass came to Freer, but he didn't get a chance on it. And it's picked up by Hurlbutt. Lamb will try it again. Lost the puck, had to chase it down. But he has no one going after him, especially on the five on three. Here's a chance. Hurlbutt shoots. That's blocked in front. Here is Lamb. Worked it down to Conroy. And another penalty coming up for the K-Wings. A delayed call. Arrows are going to stay on the power play for a while. Here's a pass in front. Knocked away. And we're going to have a K-Wing penalty. Dan O'Halloran has got another penalty for roughing. This time again to the K-Wings. And Well, if you're curious about how this works, uh, the Arrows will, the, or sorry, the K-Wings will put Curran in the box, but his penalty will not start until the penalties are over to the wings uh, prior to that because you obviously cannot have three players off the ice at one time. So you'll see the penalties come down and then the two minute penalty will start on Curran. The Arrows this year are in the Eastern Conference and you kind of wonder if maybe they'd fare better being in the West as they were last year. Well, yeah, they did fare a lot better last year in the Western Conference. This year uh, against the Western Conference, they were even, they're 500. But I uh, tell you what, against that East Eastern Conference, which is a tough conference this year, 17, 33, and 5. And I tell you what, uh, with the new teams coming in next year and the, probably the juggling of the conferences again, you never know where the Arrows could be next year. Yeah, I, I'm, a big, uh, I'm a big fan to seeing them in the Western Conference. I'll tell you, the, the, what the alignment I would like to see is I don't think they need to look at it as an East-West Conference. I think they got to go North-South. I, I think that's how they got to split the conferences. Didn't they used to have it somewhat like that? I don't know. Here's Hurlbutt getting set. Worked it down. Maurice cuts it down. Shot went wide. Now, remember the Penalty does not start to Brian Curran until the two minutes are up to both Petrovitsky and Cote. Here's Lamb. Gives to Hurlbutt. Hurlbutt getting set. Here's a pass that came to Lamb. Lamb getting set. Lamb to Hurlbutt. One-time shot blocked. And the K-Wings clear it. So it'll go down the ice. Now Cote comes out, and it's five on four as the arrows are still on the power play. For two minutes, though. Left side, it's Miles O'Connor. Gives to Conroy. Center to Lamb. Shoot! Stopped by Fernandez. Battle for it. And there's Brad Barry to take the puck and flip it along the boards. It's out at center. Chip back down by Yo. Gusev trying to lunge for it. He fell on it. And play is whistled down. 12.40 to go in the third. The Arrows two-man advantage empty. And the K-Wings lead at 5-0. 141 left in the minor to Brian Curran. The Arrows continue to get good chances on goal, but just can't seem to put the puck in the net as Emmanuel Fernandez keeps jamming those posts with his pads and making the saves on the play. Faceoff will be at center. Bashkatov, Slavchenko, Turgeon, Miles O'Connor, and Steve Jakes. Jamie Langenbrunner out there with Jim Storm defensively, Dennis Smith, and Sergey Gusev. Off the draw, it's Gusev. He'll shoot it right back down the ice as the puck flutters into Arrow territory. Jakes will go back. Seven and a half gone in the third period. Jakes, a pass for Terzhov too far. Knocked away by Gusev. That goes back into the arrow end. Jakes. He'll move it from left to right. And the pass came to the right side for Sylvain Terzhov. Jim Storm over the puck, and now it is Bashkatov trying to bring it across the line. And that's knocked away Slavchenko trying to bring it ahead. 
here comes Bashkatov. Give it back. Terzan was shot in a great save by Fernandez. Puck is in front, and the Langenbrunner will shoot that the length of the ice. Tell you what, if the K-Wings are able to kill this one off, this will definitely give them more momentum, something they, the Arrows don't want to give them. The Arrows have to stop the bleeding right now and jam one home with only 40 seconds left on the power play. Here come the Arrows after Travis Richards in a battle with Freer, picked up by Townsend, trying to chip one down, knocked away by Barry. Freer moved one ahead, but it was taken away by the K-Wings, and Zach Boyer is there. Boyer turned one in, and Gamble will come out of the net. Troy Gamble flips one along the boards, and Steve Jakes will move up ice. Jakes for Freer. Hit across the line, that hit skates. Turned away by Yo. He's bumped by Zach Boyer. Battle for it. And here comes Zach Boyer. Try and keep an eye on Boyer if you can. This guy blows bubbles when he's skating with the puck. He's like Michael Jordan when he sticks out his tongue. Boyer just continues to blow bubbles. He loves his bubble go. Out of the box come the K-Wings. And they're back at even strength. Petrovicki's there. 10.50 to go. Smith. Long pass out at center. Peacock across the line. Donnelly pulls up right side. Getting sent. Donnelly trying to center one. And that's chipped away. Arrow's trying to move it out of there. Malgunas lost it, but it's out at center ice. Mark Lamb turns it neutral ice. Gives the puck to Conroy. Hits the line with Malgunas. Long shot and a blocker save made by Fernandez. Conroy lost the puck. And here come the Michigan K-Wings. Donnelly will shoot it back at center. It is Malgunas. Couldn't work it ahead, but the arrows were back, and now Travis Richards turns it around. Shane Peacock pushed off by O'Brien. Turned away Mike Donnelly. Getting set for Michigan. Gives to Neil Brady. Brady down the right side. Cuts behind the net. Rolls the puck to Peacock. Centered one. It's scooped over Donnelly. Back to the line and out at center. But Richards turned it back in. K-Wings on the delayed offsides have to clear the zone. Back at center ice it goes. Derek Smith with under 10 minutes to go in this one. 5 0 Michigan. Give the puck to Lawrence. Cuts behind the arrow net. Wrap around. That was deflected away. It goes out of play. And whistle will halt action. 9.46 to go in the third period. K Wings up by five. Face off in the circle to the left side of Troy Gamble. Neil Brady to take the face off against Igor Bashkatov. K Wings lead it 5 0. Arrows have had their chances, though. They've had a they had a four-minute power play time and couldn't do anything with it, including two of it on at five on three. Here's Mal or Slipchenko with a takeaway. Shoots, flipped it wide. Fernandez, I think, got a piece of it. Now the drive by O'Connor. Hit Slipchenko from behind. And Manny Fernandez is indeed that. The man to make the save and cover up and hold on with 9.31 to go. And a 5-0 K-Wing lead. And it's time to take a look at tonight's third period shots on goal. They're sponsored by High Low Auto Parts. You can get an auto part anywhere, but what you need is high low K wings have put on 28 shots the arrows 27 shots on that guy there Manny Fernandez and he stopped every single one of them and the quality of shots have gotten better in this yep. especially in this third period so he's earning that shutout right now it is Dennis Smith for Michigan cleared to center that was batted down with a high stick and they'll return the face off back toward the K wing side of center ice Miles O'Connor a guy that he's had an up and down year this year and it, it, the funny thing is Dave Tippett has talked about it. Here's a guy that's got so much skill. He's got tremendous skating ability. He can move the puck and he says maybe the only real drawback about Miles is that he just tries too hard. He needs to just relax and and that's what Dave Tippett would like to see from him. He does have a tremendous skating ability. Puck is controlled by Michigan. Rolled near side Dennis Smith. Worked it ahead to Derek Smith. Smith turning in behind his net. And here comes Neil Brady to center ice. Worked on by Slipchenko. Pushed away by O'Connor. And that is offsides once again. 9.07 to go. 5-0 K-Wings. And we're at even strength here. Well, the game's starting to slow down a little bit. And I'm sure the K-Wings are going to try and slow things down a bit, at least in their own defensive zone. And the O's are going to have to try and find some offense. They couldn't get it by Fernandez on that power play that they had the five on three or the five on four they had immediately after that. That's a good shot. It kind of explains how Dave Tippett, Pete Deneen are going to have to work together and work on that bench for next year. Could be a busy summer, Adam. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see also if 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 Dave Tippett returns, what they'll do from the assistant coaching side. 
Will Pete Deneen be back on the bench? Does he want to be back on the bench? A lot of issues there. I heard Adam Gordon's in line. Uh, yep, exactly. I've, I've got this new thing for the left wing lock. Now Jake's is going to go with Patrick Cote. Cote second fight. Here's Jake's trying to war back. He missed with the right, but this right connects. Jake's on Cote. But Cote fired back with the right. Stiff right hand. Jake's with the left. Jake's with another left. A big left hand by Jake's, and then Cote tossed him down. Cote threw Jake's down after Jake's had cleaned him with a left hand, but Cote had a couple of stiff rights. Well, it's funny, you know, Steve Jake's on March 29th against Cleveland had a goal and an assist, but he didn't have a fight, which means he, he didn't have what we call the Gordie Howe hat trick, but that man he was fighting, Cote, already had the fight, the goal and an assist tonight, so already with the Gordie Howe hat trick, something we like to laugh about. All right, timeout on the ice. We'll sort out the penalties after this. 5 nothing K-Wings. K-Wings lead at 5 nothing. Guy that's been in and out of the lineup quite a bit this year is Kevin Malgunas, but when he's been in tonight, he's been effective. Yeah, and he, he actually almost got in a fight with Cote as well, and that when he dropped his gloves, but Jake's got to Cote first. Actually, Malgunas, through injuries and also uh, just not, not being in the lineup, has played two games in the last 24. So uh, good to see him back out there. He's working hard. Base off controlled by the K-Wings. An extra two minutes went up to Steve Jake's. So the for elbowing and the arrows will be shorthanded. Donnelly turning back at center for the K-Wings. He'll go back. Mike Donnelly gives it to Sergey Gusev. Watched by Lamb. And Michigan will turn it around. Gusev, long lead pass for Donnelly. He'll streak across the arrow blue line. Donnelly getting set. Watched by Conroy. Pass came in front the shot. Blocked by Gamble. And the arrows can't clear it. Mike Donnelly. Back to the line. It is Gusev. His pass intercepted by Conroy. He's got it. Short-handed. Conroy shoots. Missed it just to the short side. Valamont jumps on it. He'll turn it back down. And Gusev goes back. The man they call Goose. He'll bring it up through his own end. A pass to the near side for Kevin Meehan. That's tipped away by Sean O'Brien. And smacked right back down the ice. A minute to go in the Jake's penalty. Gusev shoveled it to the line for Jim Storm, and here come the Michigan K-Wings. Petrovichki hits the line, dropped it back right side. A pass came to Mike Donnelly, cuts in. Deeks gives to Peacock, rolls a puck in there. Gamble had to thwart that away with a right pad save. Yo fighting for it. Langenbrunner's in there, and the K-Wings come away with it. Shane Peacock. Cross ice pass now. Back to line. Peacock got it back. Shot stopped by Gamble. Rebound just gets wide of the net. Here is O'Connor giving it to Langenbrunner behind the net. O'Connor giving him a pretty good work over there. The puck is rolled away. Langenbrunner hash marks right side. Langenbrunner getting set on the power play, which is down to 20 seconds. Shoveled it down. Langenbrunner back to Donnelly. Out of top of the slot. Over to Langenbrunner. Cranked it down. Here's a chance. It came back to Langenbrunner. Looks for the man to pass through. Backdoor pass block. Came back to the line and Mike Donnelly with two seconds to go on the power play. To Langenbrunner. Shoots. That's tipped away. And the arrow slipped Chenko back out on the ice as he served the two-minute portion of the Jake's penalty. Peacock rolled it down into the arrow end. Gamble knocked it down. And Miles O'Connor is there. O'Connor. Ooh, Miss Krupke with a pass. Alguna's trying to clear it. And here is Neil Brady that rolled it down. Gamble flipped it behind the net. It's chipped along the boards. Dennis Smith trying to hold. In behind the net, it's Derek Smith. Tapped away by Maurice. And he'll move it up the boards to the line. Not out. Second effort held in by Smith, uh, Neil Brady. Trying to feed Derek Smith. And Slavchenko's there. He centered one. And Krupke will roll it away. Out at center from Algunas. And he'll dump the puck in. Slavchenko pursues. As we're down to six minutes. 5 nothing Michigan. Maurice to Slavchenko. Trying to move one in there. Now Gunas comes in there battling with Dennis Smith. That's poked away. Neil Brady is there. And he'll shoot that the length of the ice. It is icing if the arrows get there. Hurlbutt will be back to touch. And icing is the call. 5.37 to go on this one. The K-Wings lead at 5-0. You are enjoying Saturday Night on Ice. Five thirty-seven to go. And the K-Wings look like they're going to do something they haven't been able to do in two seasons, and that's beat the Arrows at home. 
0 2 and 1 the K Wings are at Wing Stadium against Houston. Sticks down, drop of the puck. Arrows have it. Krepke right point, shot right on, and Fernandez makes the save. Didn't look like a very tough save, but sometimes when they come through the crowd there, they're tough to see as Fernandez talks it over with Brian Curran about where the positioning should be and where he wants where he wants his defenseman as far as the screen ability, if you will. When you want to talk to a guy, Brian Kern's the guy, 381 career NHL games. This is his first year in the IHL. He's got a lot of hockey experience. Played in uh, Portland in the American Hockey League last year. Started this year there. Now Mark Lawrence getting into it with one of the arrows. That's Hurlbut. Hurlbut wailing away with a right hand and then Donnelly's third man in. Mike Donnelly is third man in and that should be an automatic game misconduct. Oh, it'll be interesting to see if he actually calls that because the referee were, referees were kind of in there as well. Well, they're having trouble trying to break up Mark Lawrence and Mike Hurlbut. Mike Hurlbut got the jersey pulled over his head and started to wail away on the back of his head. And Lawrence isn't done yet. He, he wants another crack at him. He looked like he was trying to start his Toro lawnmower. Yeah, and it wouldn't. No, it wouldn't. <laughs> you got to flip the switch. Put the spark plug on there. Uh. They still won't break up. I guess they still haven't decided where they're going to have uh, their post-game uh, beer. Well, I don't know if they'll be having it together. Doesn't look like it. Well, maybe Hurlbut was upset that Lawrence didn't give him any of his 42 grand. Yeah, not really. If you were just joining us, we were talking about Mark Lawrence winning $42,000 in Las Vegas last year as he sits in the box. Caribbean I poker. I've never played that. It's actually an interesting game, but I don't know if we should say that too much. Uh, I don't know if he reported it on his taxes or not. <laughs> that's just a rumor, by the way. I don't know for sure whether he did win that. Yeah, that's right. Wink, wink. <laughs> yeah. All right, they're going to sort this out. I'm telling you, Donnelly should get third man in there, but I don't know if he's going to get it. While we've got a moment, uh, let's uh, remind everybody about the Houston Arrows and Diamond Cutters International, the million dollar puck. It's covered with 171 carats of pure white diamonds and four carats of emeralds. Fan has chosen to take a shot on goal to win the million dollar puck. You got to see it to believe it. And for those of you watching on UPN 20, there it is. That's the million dollar puck brought to you by Diamond Cutters International, the official jeweler of your Houston Arrows. I don't know what happens to it if no one wins it. The rumor is that that will be your signing bonus, Greener. I'm going to hold out for more. <laughs> it only fits. <laughs> Donnelly got nothing. Interesting. An extra two goes to Lawrence for charging. And the arrows are going to get a power play here. But uh, Mike Donnelly, who I thought was uh, third man into that fracas, remains in the game. And it's not as if he jumped on his own player to pull his own player away. Yeah. He actually jumped on Hurlbut, which uh, makes it even more of more reason to give him the, the penalty. Face off is controlled by Mark Lamb. And he's back in his own end. Four check by Zach Boyer. Lamb waiting. Drifts it up to Miles O'Connor. Pass to Yo. He'll dump the puck into the K-wing zone. It's chipped to the corner. Conroy is there. Moved it to Yo. Mike Yo in the left circle, cuts in, turns one in there for Townsend, that's blocked, loose puck, Townsend again into the slot, gives to O'Connor, lets the shot go, that hit a man in front, I think it hit Dennis Smith, never made it to Fernandez, Lamb slips it down for Conroy, a minute 29 to go on the power play, Lamb top of the slot, lets the shot go, blocked by Fernandez, and he made a great play to poke it away because O'Connor came in there pinching, here is... A puck that comes to Brad Barry. He'll fling one to the line. O'Connor held it in. Smacked it down for Townsend. Conroy chased it down. Base of the circle. Center for Yo. His shot fanned on. Now O'Connor the drive. And Fernandez with the save. And he'll hold on. Good shot by O'Connor. A nice low hard shot. And if Fernandez wasn't careful, it could have slipped underneath his pad. But squeezes his pad against the ice and then freezes it as his defensemen hold up the guys in front trying to jam away at it. A good job as the puck comes loose. O'Connor positions himself around the puck and blasts and actually a little bit of a deflection off the forward that was coming up to take O'Connor and Fernandez still stopped it. It went off the stick a little bit and good thing for that butterfly style of Fernandez otherwise it would have been five to one and no shutout for for the kid looking for his fourth of the year. Face off. Picked up by the K-Wings. Brian Curran smacked it to the line. Valamont held it in. 
Balamont lets the shot go. That went wide, and then Karam near side. Freer had it poked checked by Travis Richards, but it's Slivchenko. Gives to Freer. He's bumped by Curran. Arrows fighting for the puck. That's knocked away. It comes back to the line. Balamont held it in. Second effort held in by the arrow. Slipchenko working hard along the board. Power play, though, winding down. 37 seconds left in it. Freer watched by Richards. Freer rolled it along the boards. It skipped over Slipchenko's stick. Knocked away Langenbrunner. Trying to get it out of the zone. He's tied up by Slipchenko. It's held in by Houston. Here's Sean O'Brien. Center runs. Slipchenko right in. Shoots! Oh, terrific save by Fernandez! Wow! A beautiful save in front by Manny Fernandez. Puck centered, and it came out at center. Oh, Fernandez standing on his spleen there to make a terrific save, and the puck is cleared. It is Igor Baskatov back at center. Penalty is down to two seconds. It's poked away. And O'Connor is there. 3.23 to go. 5 nothing K-Wings. And the puck batted down by Smith, and Gusev will touch. That will be a high stick and play is halted with 3.17 to go in the third. Well, Fernandez trying to make a bid for his fourth shutout of the year. The last time the Earls were shutout, it was by Fort Wayne, February 4th. They lost three to nothing. Of course, they've been shut out four times previous to that this year against Utah on December 29th, two nothing. Against this same Michigan team, three nothing. And of course, the first time they were shut out this year, October 22nd versus Atlanta at the summit, two to nothing. So this would make the five, the fifth, Shout out against the Arrows this year if the K-Wings are able to hold on. He's made 30 saves tonight. He's doing a good job making some spectacular ones. Bashkatov with Malgunas and Terzhal. O'Connor and Krupke defensively. K-Wings win it. And Gusev will shovel that right back down the ice. And where did it go? Did it go out of play? It was along the near side. I thought it stayed in, but no, I guess it went into the Arrow bench. And ah, Steve Sumner fired it in there. It's been rough for this hockey club. And they know it. And you know, I, I know I'm going to catch a lot of flack about this comment, but you know, on paper, this team, you ask any general manager, it, it was an unbelievable team that Pete Danina assembled. And, and the thing was, it just never could gel. I think that was the biggest key. Well, the thing is, these guys do get along, but one of the players, and I'm not going to mention who, just because of confidentiality, but one of the players did say, you know, individually, there's a lot of good hockey players on this team. It just wasn't a good team. Yeah. And you have to be a good team to win in this league. Yeah, and, and, and gelling is so important, and it, it just never had. It never did. I mean, you look at it, and, and the arrows never put together a streak of more than three games this year as far as wins go, and they only did that three times. Here's a turnover. Arrows have it. Turns on sharp angle shot. Stopped by Fernandez. And another penalty. It's going to be to the K-Wings as Bashkatov was upended. And the Arrows are going to go on the power play with 2.37 left. Well, it looked like Bashkatov got the feet taken right out from under him. And it's a tripping call. So the Arrows will go on the power play. 2.37 remaining. This, I guess you could look at it both ways. Gives the Arrows a chance to score with a couple minutes left in the game. But also allows the... K wings to just dump it down the ice without getting uh, an icing call against them. So they, who knows who the advantage is to as the arrows haven't been able to put one on the power play this year yet. Dennis Smith is in the box. Two for the trip and the arrows will go on the power play. And this is a, this is the kind of game you would probably suspect you'd get from an eight day road trip. You were hoping for a little stronger effort. And again, it wasn't really as much the effort tonight by the boys as maybe just not sticking to the system and they got themselves in a hole early in the second period. And also Michigan has a bigger stake in tonight's game than the Arrows do. Yes, you're right. In a battle with the Indianapolis Ice for that second spot in the Northern Division. Puck is looped down. Brad Berry had it chipped away. It came out in front. Freer, sharp angle, couldn't redirect it out there. It's cleared to the line, held in by Hurlbutt. That's chipped away, and it came out at center for Kevin Meehan. Meehan through the neutral zone, hits the line. Meehan trying to move in on goal. Meehan looks behind the net, still with a puck. And that's dug out by the Michigan K Wings and shot out at center. Travis Richards. Over to Brad Berry. At center, Zach Boyer. And here come the Michigan K Wings. Richards with a minute 50 to go in the hockey game, 113 to go in the power play. And shot right back down the ice. Here's Mark Lamb. They'll work the puck ahead to Al Conroy, smacked it into the K Wings. So that thing 
That thing had a lot of loft on it. Well, it actually chased the person down the hallway. <laughs> the puck goes up into the stands, and someone ran down the hallway to try and get away from it. I was going to say, were they getting away from it or just going to get it? Well, a little bit of both. After that, everyone chased him. Get your heart out, folks. Al Conroy, team captain. Nobody takes it as hard as he does, I think. Nobody, I should say, takes it harder than he does. He well, just lives every game like it's the last. The thing is, that, that shows the professionalism in uh, the players on this team. They definitely do not like to lose. No player does, but these guys have taken it pretty hard uh, on themselves this year, and it's, it's a tough thing to handle. Reality really sets in now. It'll be interesting how the team reflects on the year after a few weeks pass in the summer. It's a little different when you reflect on it while it's still going on, as opposed to maybe a month into the summer, you sitting on the porch of your summer home or whatever, reflecting a little bit. Puck comes to O'Connor. Carl Valamont made a good point. He says, right now, people aren't as excited about playing hockey. You know, we want to get the season over with, but by about August, you want to get the skates on. You can't wait. And speaking of Valamont, he rides back, makes a nice play, but it comes back to Langenbrunner. Shot hit Carl Valamont, and it's picked up by Yo. It is Yo on his own end. Four check by Langenbrunner. What it will do is give the guys more motivation next year, no matter where they are, whether they're with Houston or with another team. Yeah. It is Townsend. Trying to turn it down. We're down to 35 seconds left. K-Wings are going to win it. Looks like 5-0. Freer sends it back to Sean O'Brien. Worked it ahead to Freer. Slides it into the K-Wings zone. Freer pursued it in the corner. Freer tapped to the wall by Richards. Puck was centered. It hit skates. A-Wings trying to move it out of there. Battle for the puck. Townsend grapples for it. Turgeon loosens it up. Back to the line. Jake's the shot. That is smacked wide of the net. And the Arrows have to go back with eight seconds left. And the K-Wings are going to win this hockey game as... Talk about too many men on the ice. Look at all the K-Wings. You got ten guys on the ice, and there's the horn. Well, at this kind of a game, I guess it doesn't matter. They go down to congratulate Manny Fernandez. Troy Gamble on the other side leaves the ice, and... Not the strongest of games, but how do you fault the guy that's played so well down the stretch here? And you look, yeah, you look, you look at the situation though, and you say the only way he'd have been, had a chance to win is if he'd have got a shutout as well. This will be the fifth shutout, I believe, for the Arrows, or is it their fourth? It's a fifth against them this year, yeah, and the saying. fourth for Manny Fernandez. Yeah. So. We got a lot of numbers that are the same, but Manny Fernandez will pick up his fourth shot of the year. So obviously doing a good job defensively are his team, and he's doing the job in the pipes. All right. K-Wings win it tonight by a score of five to nothing. And Mike Greenlee and I will have the final synopsis of everything when we return. We'll be right back. Nothing. The K-Wings shoot out the air, shut out the arrows. It is the fifth shutout this season to the Houston Arrows. Fourth this year for Manny Fernandez. And speaking of Manny Fernandez, it's time for our Southwest Airlines just plain smart play of the game. Well, this is just plain easy to pick as Fernandez comes up and makes some great saves tonight, particularly in that third period. And right here, through a scramble, he'll make a beautiful one. And I tell you what, he made uh, plenty of saves to earn that shutout. And, uh, he deserves the player of the game. Southwest Airlines flying the low fare, low fare airline is just plain smart. Well, I've got a minute here. Uh, uh, it's the UPN finale tonight, and I want to thank you for let you.